That's not okay. I can't ask you to do something to me after seeing what you did to Dr. Banner, you don't know. Apart from hating Baby Ao the most, I hate others touching me the most remembered. When Bucky heard that Fatty Wong wanted to check his body, he immediately refused. He wasn't afraid that the other party would discover his soul as a traverser, as well as his greatest reliance, the system. Well, I am afraid, not afraid of Fatty Wong, but also afraid of the master of the Karma Taj Priory who holds the Time Gem, the most powerful guardian of different dimensions on the earth, the most powerful magician, the Supreme Mage Gu Yi. And he was really afraid that Fatty Wong said it was an inspection, but when he came over, he just slapped the palm of the soul, and he forgot all of it. Fatty Wong seemed to have thought about it for a while. Anyway, Bucky looked more like a ping, and then said, I won't touch your memory, Mr. Barnes. So you know my name? The monastery will pay attention to all abnormal movements in the world, but not to a certain extent, and will not interfere. Is the black sky not enough for you to interfere? That's another reason, I can't say more, but I won't touch your memory, I can guarantee it. If I promise you this, do you believe it? If you are also a member of the Priory, I believe it. Someone told you, aren't you good at chatting? There are quite a few people. Bucky felt that Fatty Wong was a little difficult to deal with, and he was also a little hesitant in case the one who glared at him before almost played him is a terrifying existence of Ah Haiyan, what kind of tricks did he really do in his body? The kind that the system can't even find out. Don't blame him for being suspicious, it's because that existence is too terrifying. Well, I hope you keep your word. System, if there is any abnormal energy that affects my thinking, don't ask, just absorb it immediately. Don't worry. Well, now please tell me about your previous experience. Hey, what are you doing? Bucky was baffled, because after Fatty Wong said please rest assured, he didn't do anything to himself, but went to the coffee table in the corner and made himself a cup of tea. Then say he's alright? Bucky obviously doesn't feel anything yet. I've already used the detection magic, and there's nothing wrong with your body. Please tell me how you met Ghost Rider. Fatty Wong sat down in front of the typewriter and put on a pair of glasses. Is that called Ghost Rider? You can't talk about your affairs, can you talk about that? Can. Fatty Wong was silent for a moment, and then another moment. Bucky always feels, as this guy connected to someone. First wait for a reply in silence, and then think about what to say in silence. A long time ago, there was a small town of immigrants. Something happened in the town. They made an innocent person wronged and bore the crime of others. They reached some kind of evil deal with an evil existence of another dimension, and a powerful soul eager for revenge was born, and that soul was taken away by the evil existence, and finally made into a ghost knight. Fatty Wong didn't say a specific name, but Bucky matched what he said with the Saint Van Gonzal, the Devil's Contract, the Spirit of Vengeance, and Mephisto, the Lord of Hell, in his memory. And Bucky also told Fatty Wong about his own experience, probably because he met him inexplicably, got into a fight inexplicably, and then his consciousness was attacked by something, and because of problems in the brainwashing process, he was particularly tough mentally, carried over. Well, very well. Thank you for your help, Mr. Barnes. Hey, you clearly have. That's it, what a fool, written all over your face, right? Why, you got stuck, the CPU turned for a while, and you found the rationale? Is this the end? Everything is settled? What about the Ghost Rider? It won't appear again in a short time. Mr. Barnes, please don't mention the Priory to outsiders. Even if I want to say it, what can I say, will anyone believe it? Bucky suspected that even if he told Howard, Howard mobilized all his resources, but he still couldn't find the existence of the Priory. It's really too mysterious here. Please go ahead, I won't send it away. As Fatty Wong spoke, he opened the portal directly. Leave a contact information? We will meet again if we are destined. What and what? Bucky wanted to talk, he was suffocated to death, his mind was full of shit, but he could only helplessly look at the cold Fatty Wong, who disappeared with the closing of the portal. Well, at least my body is really fine, and my time travel and system problems have not been found out by Fatty Wong. At least they didn't say anything call yourself evildoer. Although I am well water, others are river water. This feeling of being involuntary and having no final say is worse than the powerless feeling of having nothing to do with Hulk. I'll go. This, is really unfathomable. My king, thank you for your hard work, master. On the other side of the portal, Bucky's guess was indeed correct. After the portal closed, beside Fatty Wong, there was a burst of shattered mirror in the air, shining with a blurred brilliance, and a figure walked out of the shattered mirror. Out. She is slender, with a quiet and elegant demeanor, her eyes see through the vicissitudes of life, she is wearing a black gold-rimmed Kamataj mage robe, and she is shaking a sandalwood fan in her hand. She waved her slender hands lightly, and Fatty Wong bowed and stepped back. She wiped her bare hands again, 
and suddenly a screen like a virtual screen appeared in front of her, on which it was back to its original position, looking at Dr. Banner and Johnny Blazer's Bucky lying on the ground in a daze. She was clearly aware of everything, but she looked at Bucky with a little doubt, as if she was not looking at a person, but a cloud of fog. Bucky obviously stayed with Fatty Wong for 21 minutes and 37 seconds, as evidenced by the system time. However, when he came back, he found that not only Dr. Banner and Johnny Blazer hadn't woken up, but also the SHIELD's quick response team hadn't come. Bucky even took out his mobile phone to check the time, only two minutes had passed. Filling the cup silently is the most deadly, and now Bucky feels that he would rather go to fight with the Ghost Rider again, and he doesn't want someone to cup himself like this again. Fortunately, this pile of nonsense has finally come to an end. Although Fatty Wong didn't say anything in detail, at least he didn't just pretend to be doing nothing. Since he guaranteed that the Ghost Rider would not appear again for a certain period of time, it must be sure. Even if he was not sure, it was his fault. Bucky not only decided to stay away from Johnny Blazer, but also persuaded Howard that Shield should be closely monitored, but if possible, absolutely not. The ones who should not be messed with than invincible monsters are the real bosses like Gu Yi and Mephisto. At this moment, Bucky's prosthetic ear heard the faint sound of a car moving in the distance, and knew that it should be the rapid reaction force of Shield. Bucky gently lifted the scorched black scar on the severed arm of his left chest, revealing the tender pink flesh that had grown inside. Not long after, Bucky had another thought, and then on the fracture, a red and blue neon color block that was probably in the shape of an arm flickered for a while. System information. You disassembled the prosthetic body, steel arm, gorilla arm, infused with heterogeneous energy, hellfire, and got green excellent item components 5, common components 10, hellfire metal ingots 10. Hellfire Metal Ingot, Orange Legend, Special Item Component, the specific effect is unknown, and there is no available crafting specification. You dismantled the evil spirits of hell that invaded your body 1, and got Demon Essence 20. Demon Essence, Purple Epic, Special Item Components, the specific effect is unknown, and there is no available production specification. Because you defeated the Ghost Rider and Hell Evil alone, and participated in killing the mutated experimental subjects of Gamma Rays and Super Soldier Serum, you defeated the Hulk again and you completed the special task, Monster Mess, because you defeated after defeating all the enemies, the mission is upgraded to, Monster Mashup Champion. You have obtained 5000 experience points in an orange legendary random item box too. Your experience points are enough to upgrade, and you have now reached level 10. Character. James Buchanan Barnes. Level. 10. Experience points. 3950 ten thousandths, available attribute points plus 1, available expertise points plus 1. Not only has it been upgraded, but there are also two orange legend boxes. Bucky looked at the task reward, gently scratched the itchy tender flesh on the severed arm, and grinned, feeling very happy in his heart. The unicorn arm was burned by the ghost knight before, stared into a black face by the big boss, and cupped by Fatty Wong, all kinds of unpleasantness disappeared in an instant. What other people do is their business. The world is like this. Dangers are everywhere, and bosses you can't afford to mess with are everywhere, so don't worry about it. The only thing Bucky can manage is himself, and the only thing he can do is to become stronger. As long as he becomes stronger, one day, he will also become a boss. So think about happy things, such as what can be opened from the orange legend box. They all said that it was extremely peaceful, and Bucky thought that he was missing an arm, is it enough? Open directly. System information. Open the orange legendary random item box. Get the Eye of Judgment. Eye of Judgment. Orange legend. Immortal. Unique. A special prosthetic eye with four plug-in slots, comes with an irreplaceable plug-in, Eye of Judgment, which can customize the appearance of the iris, and there are two options, Ordinary Iris and Devil Vertical Pupil. Can distinguish energy and matter with special vibration frequency, and can directly observe the existence of evil spirits. Eye of Judgment. A special fast-cracking skill that can be launched directly without a network access pod. It attacks the target's consciousness, arouses a strong sense of guilt in the target, and makes it fall into a chaotic state for 60 seconds. During this period, all resistances are reduced by 15%, and the cooling time 120 seconds. Open the orange legendary random item box. Dot get the infernal enchanting specification. Hellfire enchanting specification. Orange legend, immortal, special production specification, which can strengthen the metal system equipment, prosthetic body, and vehicle once, so that its quality can be upgraded to orange legend, immortal, unique, type equipment and prosthesis, which can add hellfire attack. When you have a hellfire enchanted body, you have a certain resistance to fire, burning damage, reducing 150 points of fire, burning damage. Hellfire. 
causes 150 points of burning damage per second, and makes the target feel great pain, causing normal damage to evil spirit targets. Requires Hellfire Metal Ingot 5, Demon Essence 10, Legendary Item Component 5, Epic 10, Rare 2O, Excellent 3O, Common 50. Hellfire Enchanted Equipment and Prosthetic Bodies can and can only be equipped and implanted at the same time. Comfortable. Bucky looked at the things unpacked from the box and felt completely comfortable. Sure enough, the risk is directly proportional to the gain, the greater the risk, the greater the gain. System. Remove Kilusi Prosthetic Eye Type Eye, implant the Eye of Judgment, make a steel arm and enchant it with Hellfire. System Information. Various items are in progress. There were flashes of red and blue neon colors in Bucky's eyes in the fracture of his left chest. First, the eyes turned into a pair of glowing devilish vertical pupils, as if there was molten lava flowing inside. Bucky blinked and turned into gray-blue pupils of ordinary humans. But following his pupils glowing like molten lava, Johnny Blazer, who was lying on the ground, was faintly exuding an ominous black aura, while Dr. Banner had a faint green glow. Not only that, but his eyes also have quick crack skills, solidifying the judgment eye skill, causing confusion and resistance reduction, and Bucky can now lock on the targets of evil spirits, and can directly use quick crack on them skills, and can also attack with hellfire. Next is the arm. Bucky's arm gradually took shape, first the original steel unicorn arm, made of metal circles, and a red five-pointed star logo. Then suddenly a flame ignited, billowing thick smoke. But Bucky didn't feel any pain, just felt very hot, but it was quite comfortable. And the steel unicorn arm, like the metal utensils controlled by the ghost knight, began to gradually change. The metal was softened by the flames, and it wriggled like mercury. Circles of metal gaps disappeared and merged into one. Then dense bone patterns appeared on it, and hideous spikes protruded. As the flames were extinguished, a sinister yet beautiful metal arm was formed. Bucky swung his arm around, and it didn't feel like there was much change, but this arm was already at the level of an orange legend. Not only did the power output increase greatly, he used all his strength to strike suddenly, and there was a bang, hitting the sonic boom that could only be hit in the dual berserk state before. And with a thought in his mind, there seemed to be magma flowing faintly on his fist, and then a flame ignited again, and thick smoke rose. The physical attack of the arm has been enhanced, but more importantly, this is the system version of Hellfire that can directly hurt evil spirits. Bucky believes that if he punches down, Hulk will also suffer pain. Well, although it should still be impossible to really hurt him, Hulk is also afraid of pain. He activated the double berserk state, which greatly strengthened his reaction, speed, and burst, and also had the effect of sensory acceleration time slowing down. He really dared to go to Hulk, hit a few times. But it's just this shape. Of course it's very cool, even if it's like this in normal times, it's a bit inappropriate. Just this iron hedgehog-like arm and claws full of bone patterns, can Hill still touch it? She has no hobbies for novelty. Fortunately, although Bucky didn't really master the flames of hell, it was just a version of the system simulation attribute, but it was just a steel unicorn arm, but he could also control its appearance. So Bucky had a thought, and flames ignited on the arm of the steel unicorn again, and the metal softened and flowed, turning back into circles of metal. It's just that every time it deforms, it's flames and metal spikes, but it can't add prosthetic skin, and it has to keep the appearance of the metal unicorn arm. After trying the two new prosthetic bodies a few times, Bucky added points for the upgrade. System Information. You have reached level 10. Character. James Buchanan Barnes. Level. 10. Experience Value. 3950 ten thousandths. Body 16. Plus 8. Movement 9. Destruction 7. Fighting 8. Reaction 17. Plus 9. Pistol 7. Assault 9. Sword 7. Technology 4. Engineering 4. Craft 4. Intelligence 15, Invasion Protocol 8, Quick Crack 8, Calmness 19, Plus 8, Stealth 11, Cold Blooded 7, Health, 350 350 ths, Plus 8 0. Chi Value, 225 225 ths, Plus 4 0, Memory, 22 20 seconds, Available Feet Points, 3. The Attribute Point is still a point of intelligence, Bucky is 16 points away from intelligence, unlocking the Purple Epic Level Quick Crack specification, only one level away. After adding the points, Shield's quick response force also arrived in two subs. Dr. Banner, wake up. Bucky bent down and pushed Dr. Banner, but this guy rubbed his nose, smacked his lips, and slept soundly. So he and Johnny Blazer were simply thrown into the car and pulled away. The two vehicles evacuated first, and people will come to the scene later. However, when driving on the road and passing the previous gas station, the driver suddenly said to Bucky, 
the co-driver, sir, there may be a situation ahead. Bucky, who was out of his mind, looked at it, and his mouth smirked. Isn't that old Ross? I saw General Ross in a panic, with his tie unbuttoned, his clothes disheveled, his face covered in dust and sweat marks, and he no longer had the air of smoking a cigar and commanding. Speed up, ignore him, and go straight. Seeing that General Ross was about to run over, wanting to hitch a ride, Bucky resisted giving him an electromagnetic short circuit to let him know the urge to cross the road, just to let the driver speed up, by the way gave him a middle finger. Without talking all the way, the group drove to the evacuation point, and then took a transport plane back to the tricurved wing building in Washington, D.C. Thanks to Fatty Wong for casting a spell on Johnny Blazer, and gave Dr. Banner an enchanting palm. The two of them didn't wake up until the shield. Headquarters. The special confinement room in the basement of the building. After Howard met Hulk for the first time, he started to build such a room, similar to Dr. Zola's room in his castle, a titanium alloy structure with special armor protection plate vault. After doing some tests on Dr. Banner and Johnny Blazer, taking a blood test, leaving some dandruff, etc., they were thrown here. Howard and Bucky were in the monitoring room next to the confinement room, looking at the monitor, the two people lying on the ground in the empty room, when will these two wake up? He had already heard Bucky tell the general story, but the last part about Fatty Wong was hidden, because only Bucky knew about it, and he promised to keep it secret. Who knows? Bucky shrugged, he may wake up at any time, Dr. Banner is okay, how did that stunt driver tell him? Although Fatty Wong had to keep it a secret, Ghost Rider still wanted Howard to know, after all, Banner also knew. Since it is not certain that he will wake up and his intelligence will return to normal, we can only prepare a plan for him to turn into a flaming skull again. It's unbelievable. If it weren't for Howard saying, there is a person who can become a flame skull, fight against the real Hulk, and can use flames to control metal, strengthen guns, and even hurt Hulk. The person who said this would be Bucky, and he would directly let that people stay where they are cool. But Bucky didn't need to lie to him, he could only act like Dr. Banner, with his scientific values being provoked, and he wished he could have Johnny Blazer dissected him. Where's General Ross? HMPH, this time I must teach that nasty old thing a lesson. With all kinds of materials and videos that Bucky got from General Ross's experimental base, Howard would never let this old bastard who caused him so much trouble lightly go. This is because he is not busy enough here, he will not die suddenly from overwork. Water, give me water. Johnny Blazer woke up slowly, feeling thirstier than ever in his life. The water is right next to you. Hearing the voice, he quickly stood up and saw a bottle of mineral water beside him, just like a traveler lost in the desert for three days without water, he grabbed the bottle and drank it wildly. Huh. Is there any more? Only then did he notice that this was an empty room with only white lights. Oh, there was a personal room lying in the distance, and the voice of talking came from the speaker. But he still couldn't take care of that much, the unbearable hot feeling in his chest and abdomen made him just want to drink more water. Is anyone there? Hey. Is anyone there? After not getting a response for a long time, Johnny Blazer couldn't help shouting irritably, but he also began to have doubts in his heart. Where is he? Have you been abducted by aliens in the Gobi Desert? F carrot CK. Oh, F carrot CK. No, no no no. Mike, Joey, Ethan, F carrot CK. But when he was thinking of the Gobi Desert, he remembered his last memory before he fell into a coma, the sudden attack, the carriage was instantly crushed, blood and flesh splashed all over his body and face a green shadow, a moment of severe pain, and then, boundless darkness, but can feel that everything is burning. This made him put his head in his hands and knelt on his knees, his whole body was about to collapse. Here's water. I'm sorry I only prepared one bottle just now. Just when Johnny Blazer was feeling sad for his team members, and also felt inexplicable, when his anger and doubts were tearing his heart, a very magnetic voice sounded beside him. Raising his head suddenly, he saw a handsome young man with short hair parted in a bit of stubble, he was suddenly in a trance. There was a sense of disgust in his heart for no reason. It was the feeling of being very annoying and wanting to punch him. This handsome face seemed inexplicably familiar to him, but he was sure that he didn't know this person at all. Who are you? Johnny Blazer quickly stood up and asked, but quickly snatched the mineral water handed to him by the handsome guy, and drank it in one gulp in less than three seconds. I'm Agent Lind of the Paranormal Investigations Division. Hello, Mr. Johnny Blazer. Bucky just finished talking with Howard, and came here to meet the one who woke up first. What do you want? What was that monster before? It's not a monster. We thought it was before, but after investigation, it was found that it was just a new type of assault vehicle. Because of a malfunction, this unfortunate traffic accident was caused. I deeply sympathize with it. Traffic accident? No, absolutely not, I saw it. 
that's not an assault vehicle, it's a person. Mr. Blazer, when a person is in a critical moment, the adrenaline bursts out sharply, and the brain is shocked, it will cause hallucinations. This is a very normal phenomenon. We have noticed that you like to study various aspects of theology, metaphysics, and supernatural aspects on weekdays, kind of work. No. I'm not crazy. You lied to me. What are you trying to hide? Why did you bring me here? Not the hospital. It must be you. What monster did you create? Frankenstein. You did it. We brought you here just because we participated, and we have to go through the process according to our regulations. There is no evidence for what we say, Mr. Blazer. Please come with me, you will know it at a glance. No, it's impossible, it's not true. Johnny Blazer looked at the screen playing the surveillance video, a strange looking armored vehicle with flames burning on the roof and thick smoke from the chassis smashed through his RV at a very fast speed, and then sprint all the way and disappear into the darkness. After a while, he wobbled out of the RV, fell unconscious on the side of the road, and then a black SUV drove up to pick him up. You guys must have made this. How could it be such a coincidence that there is a camera there that captured all of this? That's actually the most advanced high-definition observation satellite, the image taken from low Earth orbit, Mr. Blazer, you have to believe in science, but don't have conspiracy theories. Bucky is still fully capable of fooling around, no matter what Johnny Blazer asks, he can find reasonable arguments that the other party cannot refute. No, it's not right, it's not true. Johnny Blazer really had no words to ask, he couldn't remember what to ask, and finally he fought hard, but how could he beat the fine cross-traveler who had nothing to do with others on the internet before crossing? But even so, it was impossible for him to be convinced, and he kept mumbling. Mr. Blazer, I can understand that this kind of encounter has greatly shocked your heart. In fact, your brain has also been impacted, and you have symptoms of a mild concussion. It is recommended that you rest more after this, drink more hot water, think less, and go to the hospital to prescribe some tranquilizers. What about the armored vehicle? Is no one responsible for this matter? Bucky can't beat it, but Johnny Blazer still needs an explanation. I'm sorry. Mr. Blazer, that has nothing to do with us, and we are looking for someone who is really responsible, but unfortunately, we don't have corresponding responsibilities, and the state police have taken over there, you can ask them. In fact, it is also a state trooper on the surface, but an agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. In short, Johnny Blazer was finally invited out by Bucky helplessly. Special agents took him away, and there would be special agents to monitor his movements afterwards. Although not the next door super investigation department, S.H.I.E.L.D. also monitors all paranormal phenomena. It's just that Johnny Blazer's situation is too special, and there is no way to investigate it now, because his past has been investigated very clearly, and there is nothing suspicious at all. And he himself showed no impression of the flame skull, so S.H.I.E.L.D. can only focus on surveillance for the time being when it is difficult to spare manpower and material resources. And Bucky was relieved, he finally got rid of this troublemaker, and stayed away from everything in the future. He has a way to deal with Ghost Rider, but the big boss behind him really can't afford to provoke him. But he is not the only troublemaker. Where's Bruce? Where's Bruce? As soon as one was sent away, another came in a hurry. Betty Ross was placed in a nearby hotel before, but she was called by another phone call. She didn't see anything else, just a Bruce. Why hasn't he woke up yet? Did you do something to him? Bucky looked at Betty Rose's critical eyes, and his face was covered with black lines. Sister in law, you were scolding the cook when you were full. Is it easy for me to get me for Dr. Banner? One arm is crippled. People can't be so heartless, at least not. But she is a troublesome girlfriend of a superhero. What kind of anger does Bucky have with her? He just changed from the Hulk and has been in a coma. You can go and see him. At least let him sleep on the bed. Sorry, it's safest for him to sleep here. For everyone, you should go and see him. Bucky resisted the urge to give his sister-in-law an electromagnetic short circuit, make fried dumplings for her, and go with Dr. Banner, so he coaxed her to accompany him by Dr. Banner's side. Dr. Banner woke up slowly, his eyes were blank, and he said in a daze, can we, or should we wake him up? His memory was frozen at the time when he wanted to slice and study Johnny Blazer. Bruce. Betty? Oh, Betty. Dr. Banner came back to his senses, and saw that beside him was his longing, unforgettable lover, who was watching him affectionately. All the experimental monsters, flaming skulls, and provocative scientific values were all thrown away in an instant. Up. The two embraced each other affectionately, and then couldn't help but nod on it. Ah, uh, although I really don't want to disturb you, but I think that would be more impolite, both of you, should we change the room first? Bucky had to interrupt the two of them spreading dog food as if no one else was there, not to mention that there is surveillance here, even Dr. Banner, he is not suitable for any activities that cause emotional agitation. If he doesn't do it, he will be green, if he does it, 
he will be green. Tisk, poor guy. After the blushing, thick necked, panting young couple calmed down and gave them a little more time, Bucky and Howard took them to another room. Before Howard wanted to have an academic discussion with Dr. Banner, Bucky hurriedly asked, Dr. Banner, do you have any plans for the future? I really want to have a stable research environment and study my own problems. Hiding around like this is not an option after all. Dr. Banner looked like an aggrieved good old man again, looking at Howard helplessly. Can you help us again, as long as it's a quiet place where no one will find out, we won't cause trouble for you. Betty Ross didn't have any scruples, and she was very embarrassed. Just you? Just you too? Bucky, however, was so overwhelmed with joy. It's not impossible, but you still have to be overseas. This time it was Bucky who spoke. Howard has his real estate all over the country, but he is ordered by the Ministry of Defense. Stark Industries does not do foreign business without military relations. He has some villas abroad, but has no scientific research resources. But Bucky has it, or he has everything that Dr. Zola has. Dr. Zola didn't think that he was asking for food and drink with Pierce at that time, and arguing and throwing picks without giving resources, but that was mostly because he didn't want Pierce to be in vain, and he didn't just point to Pierce to eat. He is in Eastern Europe and Northern Europe, and there are some unknown top secret experimental bases. Bucky ordered Dr. Zola's copies to receive them one by one. Some are active, some researchers are conducting research, and some are closed. But the resource is still there, and it is easy to activate it again. That's really good. Dr. Banner didn't want to stay in the mainland, and he was worried all day long about his cheap old man messing with him. Betty Ross, a black-hearted little padded jacket, doesn't want to see her father who always destroys her happiness. Both of them hurriedly agreed. Bucky has arranged for the two of them, and Dr. Banner can also keep in touch with Howard, and his experience of fighting the Hulk this time also gave him a lot of ideas, and he can't wait to start a wave of research. In the end, the two troublemakers were also packed away, and this accident finally came to an end. But as long as Hulk is still there, and he hasn't become one with Dr. Banner, it will never end. Da Su. You're gaining weight. Yo, who are you with? The matter between Johnny Blazer and Dr. Banner has come to an end, and Bucky is about to return. Although the monster gangster is thrilling and exciting, how can there be a girlfriend for fun? Cough. How can the warmth and peace of a family be more desirable? Bucky communicated with Howard, and he continued to be busy with S.H.I.E.L.D. and Hydra, while Bucky couldn't wait to go home. However, when I got home, it happened to be the early morning of the weekend. When I opened the door and held up the cute baby Daisy who flew over, I saw that she was missing two front teeth, and her speech was leaking. Master Linda. Dot you are gaining weight. Behind the little guy was Jessica Campbell, who was a year older than her but thinner than her. The same goes for this little girl. It's time for both of them to change their teeth. The little girl was still a little cynical, she gave Bucky a timid look, and immediately lowered her head. But Bucky already felt that this was good. After suffering such a big blow, he was really relieved to be able to get out of it so quickly instead of completely shutting himself up. Why are you so out of touch? If you want, call me uncle like Daisy. Is it okay? The little girl looked up at Bucky, and immediately lowered her head again. She didn't dare to look forward to it, and as much as she looked forward to it, she also resisted it at the same time. She obviously had her parents and younger brother, but suddenly they were gone. Compared with little Daisy who never had a warm family before, Jessica, who first had and then suddenly lost, obviously needs more time to heal the trauma in her heart. No hurry, take your time. Bucky patted Jessica on the head, took her hand, and carried little Daisy into the house. Maria Hill is still catching up on sleep next door. The two have already talked on the phone, she is also very busy these days. On her territory, there are a group of girls from Eastern Europe, and there is a rogue pimp with a furry tongue, who came to her door to discuss business, saying that he wanted to use Leisheng nightclub to attract customers, and hoped that she thank you for your support. Bucky, who was listening, was pissed when the unicorn arm was about to catch fire. Of course, Hill himself is also very angry. This is not the first one who thinks about the afterlife nightclub, but the first one who is so arrogant. But this Mao Bear hooligan really has a bit of confidence. He is a member of Mao Bear's gang called Brotherhood. He is the captain of a brotherhood. But now Mao Bear has just been disbanded for more than a year, and the whole country is in chaos. The regiment, the police, soldiers, and even the KGB all came out to mix, it can be called a group of demons dancing wildly. He brought a group of brothers across the sea to the beautiful country, and suddenly found that the people here were a bunch of scum and they were not enough for the brothers of the fighting nation. So here, he used the Kalashnikov brothers to easily get a piece of land, and brought young and beautiful women from their country, who were controlled by them with washing powder, and came here to sell their bodies. Then naturally they focused on the biggest and most fun nightclub in Brooklyn, 
and no other gang dared to do business at the Afterlife nightclub. But who is Hill, an elite agent of S.H.I.E.L.D.? A rookie who was driven to the shelves, insisted on propping up the scene of the Afterlife nightclub, and became the queen of the Afterlife who controlled every move on the streets of Brooklyn. Want to take her territory by force? She just used it to establish her prestige, so that the bastards who are always ruthless and miss her territory, who remember to eat but not to fight, will grow their memory again. But her manpower is limited, only six agents, she is playing the agent, collecting information, and then find the weak point, a light touch, breaking the balance, causing things to push in the direction she wants, extremely less directly involved in fighting and killing. That's all mission experience. There were several unsightly gangs before, but Bucky snatched them all up. But this time, the shaggy hooligan had 30 or 40 young men under his command, including Kalashnikovs, with fierce firepower. But Bucky still has something to do, but it's not that big of a problem. It's not like Hill is useless without Bucky. So, on a dark and windy night for a month, the stronghold of the furry rogue was visited by a killing god with a black windbreaker and a black body armor with a skull logo printed on it. Nearly 20 members of the fraternity including the boss, none of them survived, and all of them died miserably. And at the same time, Hill led his agents to raid the fraternity's smuggling pier, and rescued a dozen new goods, who had just arrived, Eastern European girls who had been trafficked and kidnapped here, and others. Lots of smuggled items of all kinds. With this heavy punch, once again, a bucket of ice water was poured over the heads of those bastards who came up with the idea of the Leisheng nightclub, letting them know that it's all right to talk, and it's all right to make trouble, don't rush to make fun of Leisheng nightclub. How's Frank doing? Not a while after Bucky came back, Hill also woke up, wearing cotton pajamas and slippers with rabbit ears, coming over with sleepy eyes. The two sprinkled a handful of dog food for the two little girls, and managed to disperse the two into their rooms. Bucky made some more brunch and ate some with Hill. Yeah. Hill took a sip of coffee, the strong aroma of coffee, and the aftertaste after the bitterness, completely cheered her up. When Bucky asked about the situation of the Punisher, she curled her lips noncommittally, it's getting more and more violent. You're getting used to it. Bucky thought to himself that if when we first met, we saw someone playing postmodern performance art in such a disregard of the law, and covering the floor and walls with more than people, what would you do? No wonder it didn't explode. Now Hill although he still doesn't agree with Frank's actions, agrees with the results of his actions. That means that the world lacks a group of scumbags who enslave innocent girls. No matter how those scumbags are gone, as long as they are gone. Today, Hill, who has seen too much evil, although his ideal in life is still to change the world, but his actions are to change the surroundings in a down-to-earth manner. That's why she keeps in touch with Frank. When Bucky is busy with other things, and she finds a very dangerous criminal, or the kind of target that the law can't punish for a while, and crimes happen every moment, this information will be disclosed to Frank. And Frank is also willing to incarnate the god of death in the dark, to classify those bastards who create evil into non-recyclable wet garbage. Even if Hill took the initiative to contact him once, he began to enjoy it. From time to time, he took the initiative to ask if he had the dirtiest and darkest errands, and even brought his own dry food, water, arms and legs, except for news and occasional supplies, not even a reward. Hill wanted to compensate him from other places. She used the resources of S.H.I.E.L.D. to create a new identity for Frank, acted as the guardian of his two children, and made a few more phone calls to Lisa and Frank Jr. arranged to the best specialized boarding school. This was in line with Frank's wishes, allowing him to let himself go without any worries and concentrate on being his punisher. For his children, it was at least the safest choice. Speaking of which, it's not over yet. Oh. When Bucky heard it, he regained his spirits. No end. He dared to be kind, and there was a woman who wanted to bully him, but he couldn't do anything, but he was holding back the evil fire. Life is like a box of chocolates, you never know what you're going to get next, do you know why? Knight, Brooklyn, a meat joint processing factory, the kind that provides sausage patties for the 99 yuan buffet, that is to say, just close your eyes and taste the taste, don't ask what kind of meat it is. Just like now, the meat delivery port of a meat grinder has two legs. Not pork leg, not beef leg, lamb leg, not cat leg or dog leg. Instead, two legs in sweatpants and sneakers, and around, there are all kinds of separation of flesh and blood, here is an elbow, there is a head hanging on the meat hook, just like the scene of a blood plasma horror movie. However, this is not a set, and these are not props and sets, they are all real materials. There are only two living people here, an old white man of East Slavic descent in his fifties, his hands were tied and he was hung on a meat hook. He was in such an environment, but he didn't have the slightest fear, only strong anger, bloodshot eyes, staring fiercely at another person. The one who asked, life is like chocolate, 
wearing black leather jacket, leather pants, leather shoes, black leather gloves, and a little bearded guy, Bucky. His whole body was covered with blood that had become sticky, and his face was also stained, but he didn't care, he picked up a chair, put it upside down in front of him and sat down. Because you are a real dog, you will die if you eat it. No no no. The old white man was stuffed with his own stinky socks, shaking and struggling like a large Ukrainian pig waiting to be slaughtered. Actually, I have never been very good at interrogation. As you can see, I am better at slaughtering animals. Although I know many ways to keep people awake and feel the maximum pain, believe me, the best surgeons don't necessarily have a better understanding of the human body than me. But I found that no one needs me to do this at all. Either he doesn't need it, and he recruits it all, or after using it, he still doesn't recruit it. I think, you should be the latter kind of person? Fighting nation. So, Avijay Valerievich Tarikin, do you know anything that can be recruited without my interrogation? Like your three sons, two daughters, and a pair of twins raised by your mistress? No no no. I know, it's not as bad as my wife and children, but there is another saying, that is, courtesy is reciprocal. If you break the rules first, I will naturally accompany you to the end. No no no. Then, I will take my leave for the time being. After a while, you will be able to reunite with your family. No no no. The old white man used all his strength, his wrists were worn out by the thick hemp rope, and he was still struggling endlessly. Seeing that the old white man wished he could eat himself alive one bite at a time, Bucky admired that kind of look. Bucky asked him to experience the torment of being so anxious but helpless, but then he suddenly smiled, as if he was just joking just now. Ha! Huh. Just kidding. Look at you, don't you take it seriously? You should really see your expression, it's so wonderful. Although I have every reason to do so, how can I lower myself to the level of a brute, and I have no experience of being a brute? Don't worry, one person does things and one person is in charge. The captain of the fraternity you are looking for, and you will be fully responsible for doing business with him in partnership. So look straight at me, bastard. The old white man's eyes widened instantly. Because when he saw the murderous monster in front of him, his eyes suddenly turned into a pair of vertical pupils like poisonous snakes, and there was faint magma flowing inside them. But in the next moment, his mind was buzzing, and suddenly, as if he was in the brimstone hell, there were countless burning evil spirits roaring towards him. And that ferocious and terrifying evil spirit suddenly turned into clearly visible faces. Those are the innocents he killed with his own hands in his life. He seemed to be in those crimes again, as if he had personally experienced the grief and pain of those victims. He is being tortured endlessly, no no no. In Bucky's eyes, the old white man was already screaming like a pig in just one breath. He was really like a fat pig that had been stabbed, screaming, twitching and struggling, and soon reached the critical point, suddenly his body tensed into a bow. Finally, the body softened and became wet, and a pungent smell of urine spread out. HMPH, the effect is really good. Bucky raised his eyebrows and curled his lips, thinking that this old white pig, even if he had a strong will among ordinary people, could still maintain his anger in this situation, and he didn't get anxious until Bucky threatened to wipe him out. It is said that gods and ghosts are afraid of evil people, and this is the case with the old white pig. This person can commit crimes unscrupulously only if his heart is strong enough and cold-blooded, and his mind is relatively very tough. However, under the effect of the eye of judgment, he didn't even last for five seconds, so he urinated directly. Giggle. Bucky took a rubber pipe, turned on the faucet on it, woke up the old white pig, and took the stinky socks out of his mouth, but his desire to be scolded by Bucky had long since disappeared. With a broken face, he let out a meaningless cry. The effect is too good, isn't it? I'm afraid it's not an act, hey, cub, look straight at me. After the cooling time of the eye of judgment runs out, Bucky directly hits the old white pig again. Ah. Don't, you don't want to come here. The old white pig naturally persisted for a shorter time than last time, and rolled his eyes in the blink of an eye, but although he passed out, his body was still twitching non-stop, as if he was enduring great pain. Now it's right. Bucky said in his heart that it's not good for you, an old white pig, to provoke anyone. He didn't think about interrogation at all, he just wanted to toss him hard in different ways, so as to let out a bad breath. This guy's old background has been found out long ago. He is the leader of one of the largest furry gangs in Brooklyn. He was also in the smuggling business, but he was stuffing frozen meat. He wanted to expand his business. After getting a dragon crossing the river, he, a local snake, had another person to take the lead, so he just got on board. When Maria Hill led people to raid the smuggling pier, the loss of the goods was not small, and they had already started gathering people to teach Hill a lesson. Otherwise, Bucky wouldn't have blocked him and so many of his younger brothers in this processing plant. You are like that fire, the blazing flame burned me. 
The time for the second shot of judgment eyes passed, and Bucky looked at the old white pig, who rolled his eyes, drooled, and twitched nonstop, obviously completely broken down. So he unscrewed the lid of the gasoline tank at his feet, hummed a ditty in a wild voice, and poured gasoline all the way. In the next life, be a human being. Bucky walked to the door, took off the glove on his left hand, exposing the metal palm, and lightly stroked the gasoline on the ground with his index finger, the flames instantly ignited and quickly spread to the entire room. Call. Walking out of the processing factory, the flames were already burning into the sky behind him. After taking a long breath of fresh air, the evil fire in his chest finally dissipated a lot. But the matter is not over yet. To be honest, if you weren't green at all, I think some old guy was doing some experiments. Brooklyn, on the highway. In the darker night, Bucky stood next to a luxury car that hit a utility pole, with a dent in the front and a large dent in the roof, and looked at a little giant with blood red eyes in the car. This person is wearing a tailored suit and looks at least as wide as three Bucky's, but he is not a fat pig, but a big muscular bully like a strong man with a big belly, and he looks at least two meters three tall, he is a big man Shaquille O'Neal. His eyes were red, not only because of anger, but also because a big gash was cut in the top of his head, and blood flowed into his eyes. This is Bucky's masterpiece. Less than a minute ago, Bucky suddenly fell from the sky, from a height of more than one meter, and hit the roof of this luxury car that suddenly flashed an arc and then smoked. In an instant, the roof sags and the glass explodes. Bucky jumped down nimbly, and was taken aback when he saw the big fat man. What he expected was a rogue litigator named Jimmy Wesley, who specialized in suing gang members and scooping up people's scum. He was the one who helped that Mousy local snake hook up with the captain of the Mousy Brotherhood, and he would also become the attorney representing both sides, helping them resolve matters that could take advantage of legal loopholes. And this person, Bucky also saw, was right next to the big fat man, and his head was bleeding, just like the driver in front of him, he passed out directly. But this super fat guy. What? He quickly woke up, and after locking his eyes on Bucky, he burst into boundless rage in an instant. With a roar, he pushed up the dent in the roof of the car, and stepped forward step by step, like a real bear. Like a bear with its butt on fire, it rushed towards Bucky furiously. Bucky raised his eyebrows and punched him. But the opponent turned out to be a nimble and fat man, not only predicted Bucky's punch, but also with a flexible boxing pace, he walked around Bucky's side with a whimper, and punched Bucky's head hard. Bang. Bucky didn't dodge either, and directly gave a headhammer, making a slight contest between his forehead and the opponent's heavy casserole-sized fist. Fist lost. With a click, the big fat man's wrist was tilted, but it was too late to withdraw his strength, and the wrist joint was directly dislocated. Good guy. Bucky also rubbed his forehead, but it didn't hurt, he was just shocked by the opponent's inhuman strength. How to say? Probably when Bucky just passed through, he punched the fat man in front of him with a steel unicorn arm, at best he was evenly matched. Right now, he was a little skeptical, whether it was some ferocious folk scientist who had researched some kind of serum potion, and this guy in front of him was a local super soldier. What? And this super fat man didn't feel the pain at all, and kicked out even more violently. Stab it. This big fat man's muscles are bulging all over his body. Yes, his body is not fat, but all muscles. He is as thin as the Hulk, and has several big holes in the tailor-made suit. But Bucky was too lazy to play with him anymore, and grabbed him with his left hand. Half of his ankle was missing, there was no way, it was too thick. Then the steel unicorn arm pulled hard, and the legendary orange hellfire unicorn arm dug its five fingers directly into the flesh. While blood spattered, his strength nearly three times the limit of human beings gave the big fat man a huge body, and he swung it up directly, with a bang, and smashed it to the ground. Look straight at me, bastard. Following Bucky leaned over and grabbed his throat with one hand, there seemed to be lava flowing in his eyes. Let go. Dot get out. Get out of here. Bucky let go of his hand, took a step back, and looked at the big fat man who persisted for a moment before falling into confusion, and who hadn't collapsed for a few seconds and was still struggling to resist couldn't help showing admiration. Just this willpower is even more rare than his perverted strength. Not to mention that there is no one in a million, among 100 million or 1000 million people, it is not necessarily possible that he is such an outlier. But in the end, he is still an ordinary person who has neither mutation nor black technology, and the limit of human beings is finally defeated by Gwabi. Between two breaths, he blushed, his neck was thick, and his veins were bulging. He might not be a big fat man who was about to burst his veins, he finally began to tremble, and then his flushed face gradually returned to its original color, and then gradually turned pale. After all, he was still the same as the old white pig before, roaring and screaming, curled up into a ball, and his body twitched non-stop. This time, 
Bucky didn't want to appreciate it, but took out his mobile phone and dialed a number. Hey, Howard, let Shield. Help me check someone. It's nothing, just a small thing, um, I'll transfer the profile picture to your computer. Although this big fat man's reaction is enough to give him a death sentence in Bucky's place. If he hadn't done too many evil things and committed many crimes, how could he have endured such torture with such a strong sense of guilt after being hit by the eye of judgment? But this guy's violent strength and tenacious will still make Bucky very curious. And such a person was indeed among the materials of S.H.I.E.L.D. Howard quickly asked an agent to call Bucky back. Wilson Fisk, whose father was a gangster, often abused their mother and son at home. One day more than two years ago, he suddenly disappeared for no reason. Wilson also embarked on the path of crime, but he disappeared more than half a year ago. Bucky nodded slightly as he listened to the information narrated by the agent, and it really was him, the future New York crime king kingpin. Whether it is smuggling, casinos, human trafficking, laundry detergent, every illegal business in New York must have a share of Jin Bin's interests, so it is the sworn enemy of Spider-Man, the Punisher, the Defenders and other street heroes. It's said that it's better to come early than to come by coincidence, but it's better to travel early to be a coincidence. Bucky didn't expect that he would meet this crime king directly when he was still dormant and waiting for an opportunity before he made his fortune, even before he started his criminal career. Life is like a box of chocolates, you never know what you're going to get next. Soon, five or six seconds shorter than the total 60 seconds of the Eye of Judgment, the future king of crime with extremely strong willpower stopped twitching, his eyes dull and limp on the ground. But it was only two or three minutes. Bucky just lifted Jimmy Wesley out of the car, who should be the same guy as the James Wesley, in his memory, and simply flipped through the inside the luxury car. He found that Wilson, who was lying on the ground, showed signs of regaining his eyesight. This time, he really admired this guy's tenacious willpower. No wonder, otherwise, it is not enough to become the criminal king of the underground in New York. But the admiration was nonetheless, Bucky still stood in front of Wilson, and then took out a pistol from the processing factory from his back waist. Pass it into his hands. The next morning. The first product of Stark and Lind intelligent technology has caused widespread infusion in the IT industry as soon as it was released. It claims that this is the first web browser for the public and will unlock the internet for computer enthusiasts. Vale. And the stock price of Stark Industries is stabilizing after Howard Stark personally announced that he is considering incorporating smart technology into the group. It seemed like nothing happened last night, Bucky who just took a nap, waited for the two little ones to go to school, went to wake up Hill, who had a rest after morning exercise, and made her a cup of coffee, turn on the TV again. After a fire broke out at a meat processing plant in Brooklyn last night, and a large number of people were killed in the flames, another murder occurred on the road. Three people who the police claimed have not yet identified were all killed by shooting. Bucky switched from the financial channel to the news channel, and it was the two news he made last night. One is that he was processing non-burnable wet garbage in a processing factory, and the other was that he accidentally met the future New York crime king on the road, and directly killed his great criminal career in the cradle. After he used the Eye of Judgment to break down Wilson Fisk, he gave him a cyber psychosis and gave him a gun. After that, it is not difficult to guess. Wilson Fisk shot and killed his good friend and good assistant James Wesley, and then, after there was no one to kill, shot himself in the temple, ending his sinful enough life. As for the future Lord of Sin in New York, the rewards given by the system are just random item boxes of green and excellent grades that are not worth mentioning. Bucky is not surprised either. After all, the key word is future, and it's not Jin Bin's Wilson Fisk. Now he's just a bully who hasn't made a name for himself. In fact, Bucky is already very satisfied with having a green box. While Hill was watching the news, took a sip of coffee calmly, and took another bite of the bagel smeared with peanut butter and chocolate sauce. She was not surprised that this kind of result would happen. When she told Bucky that someone was in his absence, she would trouble her, and when she saw Bucky's eyes that became cold and bone chilling, she had already expected this. This is the case. She is no longer a fledgling rookie agent, she is the queen of the afterlife who decides life and death with one word. She has accepted the results to see the problem to the maximum, turning a blind eye to the process. What's more, this is her man's performance of caring about her. So she was just a little worried. If Bucky killed so many people in one go, would there be any psychological impact? For the rest, she was even more curious about how Bucky's arm turned back to metal. She only heard from Bucky that his left arm was a prosthesis, but she had never seen the real appearance of the metal unicorn arm under the skin of the prosthesis. About this, after Bucky came back, he first heard that Hill had been bullied, and then went to take revenge. After returning, he practiced again, but he didn't have time to tell her in detail. Base. Phew. Bucky took off his long-sleeved t-shirt, 
and the metal unicorn arms seemed to have magma flowing. After the surface softened, it squirmed and turned into a dense pattern of bones, followed by protruding ferocious spikes, and flames ignited on the palm. Is this some new technology you invented? Hill, who hadn't been shocked by Bucky recently, widened Kazilan's big eyes again, and opened his mouth wide, as if his jaw dropped from shock. It's my newly awakened ability. Bucky didn't elaborate, but the system, even Hill, he just said that he still hasn't figured out what his ability is. Well, you can control yourself. Don't get excited, I can't stand this. Fortunately, the Commander Hill in his memory, now the Queen of the Afterlife, has a strong ability to accept the supernatural. Besides, being close to Mo Zahay, the number of times he was pulled into the car by someone has increased, and Hill has gradually become an old CG. How can it be? Didn't you prove it just now? If you don't believe it, just check it again. Hey, I haven't finished my breakfast yet. Hurry up, don't mess around for another hour. Two hours later. The Queen. It's all your fault, it's half an hour late. You said, don't wait another hour. I was wrong, can I be wrong? Hey, you are forcing me to make more mistakes. This is a residential area in the suburbs. There are lawns in the front and back, garages next to it, and a certain distance between the two buildings. It is not considered a villa, but it is better than the row of houses, where the houses are next to each other. Some detached houses. Bucky's silver gray Ford Mustang was parked next to a for sale, stand, and a real estate agent was already waiting at the door of the house. Considering Jessica's situation, Bucky discussed with Hill and decided not to go to Manhattan to sell a penthouse, not to live in the steel jungle, but to live in a more livable environment. It just so happened that this residential area was not far from Mary Jane's house, another little friend of Little Daisy's. There was a school bus stop here, and it was not too far from the school, just a few stops away. As for the surrounding neighbors, Hill also asked his staff to investigate clearly, and there were no particularly quiet neighbors. Bucky didn't pay much attention to the real estate agent's eloquence, he had already picked this place, and it was just a formality. On the contrary, he cared more about Hill's opinion. He wanted the relationship between the two to go further, so he kept asking Hill to help him make up his mind. So, since this place suits you well, why don't you just move in and live with me? Seeing Bucky's slightly nervous gaze, as if she had never seen it before, Hill rolled his eyes and gave Bucky a look, HMPH, then I have to think about it, I live alone it's very comfortable. But there are many advantages to living together. For example? Come on, let me tell you well. People are in good spirits on happy occasions, the house is settled, and when Bucky, the mistress of the house, comes to Stark Tower, his steps are brisk. Sir. Barbara, long time no see. Bucky's president's secretary and a rookie agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. Barbara Morse, is dressed in workplace attire, a women's suit with a skirt that is as high as the sky, wearing a pair of black-rimmed glasses, and the neckline is untied. Hun Yuan made Hill feel ashamed and angry, and Bucky couldn't help but have the urge to turn on the prosthetic eye monitoring mode. And she was still used to calling Bucky, sir, but when she heard, long time no see, she showed Bucky's familiar helpless expression. Back then, when he made Hill feel helpless every day, Hill always looked at him with such resentful little eyes. It was agreed to entrust him with a heavy responsibility, but he didn't expect that he would quit. A lot of company affairs were waiting for Bucky to deal with, but he just ran away without a trace. Things piled up in front of her, a rookie president secretary, almost every time someone came, they all glanced over with critical eyes of, this flirtatious rookie must have some ulterior friend transaction with the president. No wonder Barbara was so bitter. However, when she saw Bucky facing the mountain of documents with a sad face, and the high-level executives of the company flocking to her after hearing the news, looking at her pitifully with help-seeking eyes, her mood improved a lot for no reason. I'm really the material to be the president. In one sentence, I have settled all the problems. This means that Bucky ran away directly, fled all the way to the experimental area, locked the gate, and left Barbara and others in a mess in the wind. No one could hear this sentence. Otherwise, a group of people would eat his heart alive. Of course, Bucky is not an escape of, as long as I don't see and hear and don't hear, it's completely fine. Dr. Zola, help me notify Barbara, and ask her to select the most important and urgent items and send them over, and then you can enter them, analyze them for me, and then give advice on how to deal with them. Yes, your excellency. Bucky connected directly to Dr. Zola's mainframe, and gave him such an order, and he still acted as the shopkeeper. However, with the help of Dr. Zola, although Dr. Zola is not proficient in management, at least he has been managing a large number of personnel and resources, and he can accurately process various data and make absolutely rational judgments, which will make Bucky's job as much easier. Tony, you kid. What did you do to my little D? Bucky enters the laboratory from the corridor, and as soon as he enters the door, he sees a mechanical arm connected to a crawler chassis, 
and a machine with a flowery D logo engraved on it. There is also a camera above the mechanical arm, which captures Bucky, and squeezed three mechanical fingers at him. His face was black in an instant. Don't tell me, my cool little D was dismantled like this by you. You see, if I power up or not, you will be finished. Ha! Huh. Are you surprised? This is not little D, this is dummy. Oh, by the way, isn't this the stupid intelligent robot from Tony's house that I remembered? Seeing Tony wearing an NWA t shirt with a proud face of, I got it right, Bucky rolled his eyes angrily. Is this an intelligent system you wrote yourself? But he was still more curious about what his nephew made, and he turned around Shoudai, and Shoudai's mechanical arm also turned around, as if looking at Bucky curiously. How about it, isn't it good? Shoudai, go and make a cappuccino for Mr. Tony. Shao Dai recognized voice commands faster than Shao Di, turned around and went to the rest area. Then with Bucky in the past, I saw the wonderful invention that Shao Dai and he had seen before crossing, the slap wake up machine, like a feeding machine for the mentally retarded, with a mechanical arm and three mechanical fingers, tossing coffee machine, throwing coffee and milk froth everywhere, and finally handing Tony the handle of a mug. However, although Bucky wanted to laugh and say that, but he also saw Shao Dai's voice recognition speed, and most importantly, Xiao Dai handed over a cup, lowered his head, and seemed a little ashamed like a dog that knocks over its owner's cup. Although the accuracy of the automatic program execution, Xiao Dai is not as good as Xiao Di, but mentally retarded, um, in terms of intelligence, it is greatly surpassed. Excellent, I knew you could do it. Bucky patted his eldest nephew on the shoulder with a look of relief. He knew that if he gave a super genius enough resources and some time, he would be able to reap a surprise. Of course, the inspiration of your soul algorithm is also indispensable, um, although there are not many. Tony didn't have all the judgmental and critical eyes that Tony expected, and the combat power he had prepared was useless at all, and he was somewhat stuck. Let's take a look at Shao Dai's core code and give me some advice. Throw in a peach and return a favor, Bucky showed him the core secrets of the soul algorithm, and he naturally wanted to show Bucky his results. Isn't it one of his purpose and source of motivation to harvest the other party's surprise, even shock? Bucky sat in front of the computer and carefully browsed Shao Dai's core code. Although he has Dr. Zola, Dr. Zola is unique. He is very interested in artificial intelligence. Little D and Dubai are both his works. Of course, he also wants to create his own artificial intelligence. Mr. Stark, you want a big bucket of Coke and ice cubes, and a cheeseburger without lettuce. Oh, the president is back. It's all said. Just call me Tony. Okay, Mr. Stark, I see, Mr. Stark. Really, hey. Didn't you say no lettuce? That would ruin the perfect combo of cheese ketchup and beef patty, and is this a bucket of coke? As your life assistant, I need to care about your body, not your unhealthy dietary needs. Please finish your vegetables well, and this apple. Bucky was looking at the code and was fascinated when he heard a bickering sound. Looking up, his eldest nephew was talking to his personal assistant Pepper, facing a bottle of soda, an apple and a cheeseburger with lettuce, you said, flirting, with me. Tony is really a bit of that, and Pepper might be too. But she is businesslike, but she is not repulsive. Perhaps similar to Barbara, she has also been treated with colored eyes by her colleagues in the company? After all, although Tony is not the president, he is the eldest son of the chairman's family, and he is also the interim chief technology officer of the company, a real super genius. In the past few days when Bucky was away, the company was busy going around because of the newly released products, and there were some technical problems. They couldn't ask Dr. Zola, but Tony, who was also treated with colored eyes at the beginning, said a few words the words were settled, and real approval came right off the bat. Little Pepper, an intern who is not a regular employee, received only a lot more doubts than Barbara. But she was also quickly impressed by Tony's super genius head, and she was very optimistic about this potential stock. Well, although she was also arrogance, stinky fart, that Tony's head couldn't tolerate, she always wanted to slap him a few times. But she still followed him all the time, and made proper arrangements for his needs in work and life. Of course, the elder nephew's physical needs are not sensitive. Not long after the eldest nephew restrained himself, it was also Little Pepper who was indifferent, which made this wayward guy start to wander again. Although he was not as extravagant as before, but these days, Little Pepper took over the job of the old housekeeper Jarvis, helped him get rid of the three girls. That's why Tony wanted to drink ice cubes and gave him soda water. Bucky didn't care about this pair of Wangxi lovers, and continued to study Xiao Dai's core code, thinking about how to improve Xiao Di and Dubai but went to a separate laboratory, so as not to prevent the young couple from bickering. In addition to studying artificial intelligence, Bucky finally had time to take a look at Dr. Zola's black technology, and continued to gnaw at the technical principles of his steel unicorn arm. 
In addition to gradually indulging in research, Bucky also intends to open up new businesses for the company. Although the web browser occupies the number one title in the world, it is enough for a company to operate and develop. But Bucky, a time traveler, how could he stop at just being a browser? Knowing the development trend of the internet, he certainly wants to do more. Hey, aren't you the Mr. Lind from before, we met, remember me? Oh, hey, Constable Beckett, right? What a coincidence, I didn't expect you to live here. Then we're neighbors. A few days after Bucky became obsessed with research, all the procedures for the house were completed, the house was packed, and a moving company was called to transport everything to the new home. Then, when the staff of the moving company unloaded the goods, Bucky once again acted as the hands-off shopkeeper in the name of not hindering Hill's command and dispatch, and came out to let the air go. I found that across the road, from the house diagonally opposite, came out a tall, youthful and beautiful girl wearing a hoodie, sweatpants and jogging shoes, with a pair of long legs that did not lose to Hills. And I still recognize him at first sight. It's the rookie police officer when I first met the Frank family, and the heroine of the future psychic detective, Kate Beckett. No, this is my father's house. He lives here alone, and I sometimes come here for a night on weekends. The education in the beautiful country encourages children to be self-reliant at an early age, and people also yearn for a free life without parental control. Just like Beckett, she actually rented a house in Queens. Xiao Qiang was a pet, basically there was no sound insulation, and she listened to the action drama next door every night, and sometimes the old one-bedroom apartment where people exercised was really hard to describe. But she has no idea of coming back to live with her father who lives alone. Obviously, the house she rents here is basically the difference between heaven and hell. Oh, that would be such a pity. Bucky smiled without regret. Although he still liked this character at the beginning, but he really wanted to deal with real people. He knew that this typical protagonist is the girlfriend of Dashi, and he is also the righteous protagonist of Dashi. One of them is how troublesome they are. Hey, have you met someone you know? Yes, let me introduce you. Even though he was moving, Hill still didn't wear work clothes, but was dressed in a fashionable and beautiful dress. This is when she saw her busy, but her man was lazy and dared to tease the girl. This is how he finally got her, do you want to let yourself go? You, it turned out to be you. However, before Hill pinched the soft flesh around Bucky's waist, Beckett suddenly pointed at Hill very rudely, showing an unbelievable expression. Yo, so it's you, little rookie. Short oil, there is a story in it. Bucky saw that Hill suddenly looked like a high-ranking queen, but Beckett bared her teeth like a kitten with blown hair, and immediately felt that something was wrong. HMPH. Nice to meet you again, Mr. Lind. That's it, goodbye. Under Bucky's curious gaze, the two looked at each other, and finally Beckett was the first to snort, with a look of, see you again, turned and ran away. Hill finally looked at Bucky, and said with a half smile, you're pretty good. On the first day you moved, you got on good terms with your neighbors. Bucky shrugged indifferently, this is the patrol police who went to block the scene when I met Frank for the first time. I still want to ask you, what's the situation with you two? She. Hill couldn't help but smile when he thought about it. As we all know, the police cannot handle a case without the help of an informant, and the rookie police officer Beckett will develop her first informant at that time. That is to find some low-level habitual criminals, such as petty theft, pimps, retail investors who sell, jelly beans and grass rolls, etc., catch them, and then let them provide more and more serious criminals. Information. And the target that Beckett wanted to threaten happened to be Hill's informant, and it was the jelly bean seller that Tony met that time when Hill gave him a glass and opened a scoop for him. After Hill had subdued him, he used him as an informant and collected a lot of information about drug heads in Brooklyn. Naturally, Hill couldn't let a rookie make trouble for her, so she used some tricks to tease Beckett, taught the rookie a good lesson, and made the rookie suffer so much that she couldn't tell. There is no way to get Hill's handle. Beckett was young and energetic and wanted to get back on the scene, but she was warned by her instructor and the patrol sergeant, officer sergeant, not to trouble Hill. And as the cleanest nightclub in New York, the Afterlife nightclub has always supported the work of the police department, so don't bother others if you have nothing to do. Beckett could only endure it for the time being, keeping it in his heart, and thinking about finding his way back one day. Unexpectedly, by such a coincidence, Hill became her father's new neighbor. Beckett regarded Hill as his deadly enemy, but Hill found Beckett quite interesting. She saw in the rookie policeman the dedication to maintaining law and order, the kind of black and white purity. The rookie agent who used to fantasize about being a heroic female 007 all day long also has such purity, but because of a certain guy, the power called, reality, brought her black and white closer and made her black and white intertwine. Seeing the back of the little rookie running away, Hill couldn't help but smile slightly, and then gave a lazy guy another look, go and move things. Yes, 
Yes, report to the officer. I found a package named Hill, so I will move to the bedroom. Bucky smiled, picked up Hill and ran. The appearance of Beckett was just a small episode, and the Bucky family devoted themselves to the big business of moving again. They worked hard all day until the evening, but they only fixed the furniture and moved each person's boxes to the corresponding rooms. It can also live in people, and then it will be cleaned up slowly. For the housewarming, there should be a housewarming party. Although Bucky didn't make many friends after crossing, there are some, Frank and Howard, who can barely be regarded as the eldest nephew, and they can talk to the Hairline brothers. Little Daisy also has Mary Jane as a little friend. Then have a barbecue party in the backyard, and invite the neighbors to get to know each other. There are sophisticated people everywhere, and this kind of high-end residential area will not have any messy people, so it is necessary to maintain the relationship between neighbors. But this can all be taken slowly, Bucky and Hill, there are other things to do. The meat processing plant that Bucky burned last time was not only burned by the boss and his men, but also a large amount of washing powder that he and several other Brooklyn bosses brought in together. He not only eradicated one gang, but also caused several other gangs to lose millions of dollars in goods. Gangs, in the final analysis, are seeking money. Cutting off people's wealth is like killing their parents, and Bucky is tantamount to killing the parents of hundreds of gangsters who made money. And the fire cannot be contained in the paper, although there is no proof of death, but the free heart testimonials, it is not difficult for the bosses to find out who the one who was exterminated recently offended. So an operation against the nightclub of the next life began. The people are not afraid of death, how can they be afraid of death? In the same way, hooligans are not afraid of being beaten, and waves of beatings and waves come again one after another, and they come to make trouble in an endless stream. Afterlife nightclub has suddenly changed from being the safest and cleanest venue in New York to a fight in three minutes, a cockroach in the venue in five minutes, and paint and dung in the parking lot in ten minutes. It seems that all the gangsters in Brooklyn are united to add trouble to the afterlife nightclub. In just two days, the day Bucky moved, the Leishung nightclub closed down for reorganization and could no longer operate. Bucky also didn't expect that 200 hooligans of the fighting nation could do thousands of British football hooligans, so why would he only dare to use such indiscriminate means to disgust people? In fact, it's not just dare, it's just an appetizer. The bosses have united a long time ago, determined to eradicate the nail in Brooklyn, the Leishung nightclub. Leishung nightclub attracted a large number of customers, but they did not allow their washing powder, jelly beans, grass rolls, women, any products to enter the market, which has long been a thorn in their side. Otherwise, James Wesley wouldn't have been involved, helping them hook up a gang of mousy thugs, and causing trouble in the nightclub. And such hairy bandits, after the disintegration of the behemoth in the north, don't have too many and don't be too easy to find. They sent people to make trouble for the Leishung nightclub, most of them were street gangsters who intimidated and instigated, in order to make the Leishung nightclub have no time for others, and then they concentrated their efforts to bring down the Leishung nightclub in one fell swoop. The bosses thought that the Leishung nightclub was just a young man who was unconventional, so he found a few men who could fight, and played something different. But the Punisher and Bucky slaughtered twice in succession, it was no longer Bucky's previous beating. Although both were beaten to the extent of being sent to the ICU, it was not like this direct extermination. This made the bosses finally realize the seriousness of the problem. Bucky didn't know what people saw after the fire was extinguished. As a result, the rogue leaders of several fighting nations have aroused their desire to fight, the more such enemies are, the more they must face up. Night. Leishung nightclub that is closed down. Outside the nightclub, black cars stopped and surrounded the entire nightclub. Among them were three black Lincoln stretch luxury cars, and three typical Eastern Slavic tycoons came down. They were all in suits and leather shoes, and they were meticulously groomed, but all of them looked sullen. People came out of the vehicles around them one after another, some of them were flamboyant, while others looked serious and stood upright, with a faint aura of iron blood. But in the nightclub, there were only ten scattered people. Hill sat on a high chair in front of the bar, flicking a glass of whiskey, surrounded by six shield. Agents who had been following her, and three academy interns, including Sharon Carter. Not to mention the three rookies, even the six agents, who hadn't experienced a fierce gun battle for a long time, were a little nervous. The other party obviously came with the attitude of taking it directly, and had no intention of negotiating at all. But their boss left only a few of them, and they are still here to guard. Hill, on the other hand, looked indifferent. Looking carefully, she didn't seem to be calm or calm in every major event, but a little lazy. She took a sip of her wine and turned on the TV at the bar. What was played inside was not a TV program, but the footage from the camera outside the nightclub. A certain lewd dog even took her to exercise before she acted. Now that her waist is sore and her legs are weak, she can't lift her spirits at all, 
so she can only watch the performance. Everyone also looked over curiously. When someone's future second sister-in-law, little girl Sharon saw her, her eyes widened and she covered her mouth. Because on the TV, a figure she felt familiar from the back suddenly appeared from the nightclub gate and walked towards the group of people single-handedly. A group of Mousy was obviously also very curious about this person, and a group of people stopped because of this person. A younger brother pointed to someone and asked, Who are you? Bucky restored the classic Winter Soldier outfit, black combat uniform, goggles and mask, glanced at the less than 100 menacing men and horses, curled his lips and said, Me? The trash sweeper. The younger brother rushed over viciously, took out a pistol and pointed it at Bucky's forehead, I'll give you one last chance, think it through before you speak. Okay. Bucky raised his hand and said with a serious expression, I'm here to FCK you up. Crackling. Bucky grasped the little brother's head with his left hand backhand, and gently broke it, so that his chin was facing the sky. Following the figure, it suddenly disappeared. Oh my god. In the nightclub, everyone watched the TV, the killing god in the dark night, flashing around, rushing from left to right, taking away a life with one knife, blowing up a head with one shot, harvesting life like Moe's emotional killing machine. Except for Hill, who had seen it before, his jaw dropped in shock. Everyone feels that Bucky's speed is very fast, but it's not unreasonably fast, it's just precise and deadly. One person can calculate all the possibilities against nearly a hundred people. To him, only his non-stop fatal blow. You still want to run? What are you dreaming about? You guys are already surrounded by me alone. Bucky knew that many people were watching this killing feast, so he didn't use unconventional means. But it's just that the killing skills of the Winter Soldier that he has mastered, and his physique that is close to three times the human limit, are not a group of hooligans, and some ordinary elite mercenaries, less than 100 people, can resist it. Soon, nearly 100 people became 6 to 70 people. And even if it is a regular army, if there is nearly one third of the battle damage, the morale will collapse. Not to mention this group of stragglers. Although this is a group of hooligans from a fighting nation, hooligans are hooligans. If the other side is also a hooligan, if they lay down one, the other side will also be laid down, then they can still fight to the end with the courage of their blood. But there was only one person on the opposite side, no, a Terminator, who had killed almost 30 of them, and was still unscathed, and he was killing them faster and faster. It's just that they are not in vain. But, whoever runs, how can he escape Bucky's sight? When Bucky saw that the other side couldn't afford to run away, he naturally wanted to play tricks and stare at whoever died. As soon as the quick cracking skill was released, the dozen or so birds and beasts who had scattered before they could disperse, immediately burst out with electric arcs or green mist, or directly rushed to the street without a sound. As for the unrelenting battle, Bucky's killing continued. Finally, after more than a dozen lives were left behind, the morale of the hired Mousy mercenaries could no longer hold up. The three Mousy bosses had long been hiding in the car, sweating non-stop, and at this moment, finally, he yelled and drove regardless. But Bucky can make them do what they want. Those who come out to mess around will do what they say, if they surround them, they will naturally wipe out this group of bastards. Since it is a fighting nation, let's fight to the death. Queens, Bucky's new home. A van was parked at the door of his house, and the side door was opened, revealing the armed men in black clothes and masks carrying Kalashnikov. However, they haven't waited for them to get out of the car. Puff. The first guy who stepped out of the car door with one foot suddenly stopped, and a strange sound came out. The others were still wondering, but the one behind him felt hot liquid splashed on his face, and he saw that the neck of the person in front was pierced by a strange mechanical foot covered in blood. But before they could react, the tip of the mechanical foot suddenly lit up with red light, and a laser beam was fired instantly, and the mechanical foot turned around. In an instant, everyone in the car, including the driver, stopped moving. A scorched black line appeared on everyone's body. However, some people were burnt through the chest by the laser, some were the abdomen, and some were the head, but when those who were still alive wanted to cry out in pain, a green mist erupted from their bodies instantly. Then, the blood-stained mechanical leg was pulled out from the man's neck, and touched the man's chest, causing him to fall back into the car. Under the moonlight, there is only a little refraction of light, which proves the existence of the small flat head in optical camouflage pattern. A gadget with a square box with six spider legs, climbs to the roof, pulls the door back with a mechanical leg, climbs from the roof to the driver's seat, opens the door, turns the key deftly to start the ignition, and controls the car with a mechanical leg steering wheel, another leg in gear. Another leg pokes into the driver's knee, controlling his leg to step on the accelerator. The little thing drove the car out steadily, didn't stop the car until it was outside the residential area, then got out of the car, took six mechanical legs, ran home quickly, and climbed to the ceiling of the door, 
again in alert mode. And at this time, it was the time when Bucky went on a killing spree, and a group of hooligans he killed fled. But if you want to run, you can't run away. All the car engines were blown up by Bucky with an electromagnetic short circuit. He also took out the G-58 intelligent tracking submachine gun, the prosthetic eyes locked on all the targets, pulled the trigger, and the tracking bullets crossed arcs, hitting heads with precision. There is also a target lock skill that is not within the line of sight, mark it with a red frame, and use the skill to turn it over. Then make up the knife. This group of people made troubles for Bucky and Hill again and again, they didn't know how to write dead characters, and he didn't intend to keep a single one alive. Oh, I still plan to keep one. Bucky left behind only one rogue boss, he smashed the window of the car with one punch, and turned over the guy in the car, and he took it out, summoned the system version of the Falcon Flying Wings, and took this guy with him soar into the sky. Ms. Hill, can you tell me what happened here? Sorry, Sergeant Stacy, I don't know anything about the outside world. You probably have heard about our recent encounters. We are closing the door to discuss countermeasures. We just called the police after hearing the gunshots and dare not go out. We won't know what's going on outside until you come. Bucky had a blast, and ran off after the spanking, leaving a mess for Hill to deal with the cops coming to clean up the floor. Fortunately, the mousy bosses cleared the block long ago in order to do business. And this is the original style of the Winter Soldier no survivors, no witnesses. No one can prove that I did it without a living person seeing me. Well, there are still witnesses, but obviously Hill and her subordinates will not speak out. The sheriff named Stacy, sergeant, as a middle-aged man in his forties with a serious face, he did not accept Hill's perfunctory, and asked in a deep voice, then the surveillance video here, may I see it? I didn't even start a business. What kind of surveillance video? You can watch whatever you want, but only up to yesterday. Ms. Hill, you have been very supportive of our work, and I hope to continue to maintain a good relationship with you. I think it's very difficult. We are troubled by gangsters every day, and this kind of thing happened tonight. Don't say you can't guess what those people are here for, and you don't need to explain why the police arrived so late. Good relationship? Hee <laughs> hee, I think my nightclub is about to fail. Oh, Kong Muang, Ms. Hill, people don't speak dark words. These Mousy gangs are clearly here to trouble the Leishung nightclub. They were massacred outside your store. You tell me that you don't know anything about it? However, in the face of Sergeant Stacy's somewhat helpless avoidance of certain issues, and then his agitated aggressiveness, Hill just shrugged. A certain person drools a lot, and Hill has also mastered the kind of little eyes that are so angry that people don't pay for their lives. Sergeant Stacy, I still can only tell you that I have no comment. When encountering such a thing, I think the nightclub will not be able to open for a while. It just so happens that I have a good rest for a few days. That's it, it's related to the case. You can call my lawyer. Don't leave the city. The queen of the afterlife nightclub is really beyond the control of Stacy, a sheriff. Even the head of their police station can't play tricks and harass every day without sufficient evidence. That would just lead to a lawyer's letter and put him under a lot of pressure. And this bloody massacre, obviously Hill can't get rid of the responsibility, such a ruthless person, even if he is upright, he still has to pay attention to methods. So he could only helplessly say, don't try to run, to Hill's back, in exchange for Hill waving his hand indifferently. Yo, little rookie, are you on the night shift? Hill left through the back door, just in time to see the rookie patrolman from the neighbor's house who was guarding the cordon. HMPH, I really saw the right person. You are such a cruel character. I suspect that all of this has something to do with you. Little rookie, play this trick with me, you can practice for a few more years, and be on duty, bye. Faced with Beckett's frizzy, provocation, Hill just smiled, patted her on the shoulder, left her behind, and walked away. But in fact, Hill, who started the car and left, couldn't help but sighed. Her man's murderous nature was getting more and more murderous. It was okay to be out of sight and out of mind before, but this time he witnessed such a bloody execution. Sure enough, someone went to the house. Well, I know, it's fine. After receiving Bucky's call, Hill felt that her man did a great job. If she wants to mess with her, she is fearless, but if she wants to mess with the two little guys she already considers her family, if she wants to mess with her family, a bunch of bastards, death is not a pity. But she didn't go home directly, knowing that with Bucky's magical invention guarding the house, it was enough that the house was safe enough, and she still had things to do. Hill drove to a poor residential area, where there was a safe house of shield. Putting it in his pocket, he looked like a homeless person and walked towards the safe house. When she came to the basement of the dilapidated residential building and opened the electronic lock of the secret door to enter, she heard a scream that she didn't know how to describe. She has never seen what it looks like when a pig is stabbed and bled. 
Everyone has a retirement plan these days, including gangsters and purple skinned bald old farmers. Hill, should we start thinking about pensions? Um. Ah? Uh, for Bucky's teasing, Hill didn't care what the old purple skinned bald farmer was. Because her attention was not on Bucky at all, but was completely attracted by what was in front of her. What could make Hill care so much? The answer is money, dollars, knife music. So this money is definitely not one or two, nor is it a stack of two, or even a stack of two. But on the car. On the trolleys, there are Franklin, that has been stacked into cubes and sealed in plastic. A forklift would have unloaded them and handed them over to the sober employees here for inventory. If a cube has 500 million, there are probably more than 100 million cash here. This is 90 million knife music. If it is exchanged for rabbit coins, it will be more money than Wang Duo Yu after he got Crouching Dragon and Phoenix. So this is definitely not the money that the three Mousy gangs can save, their total cash flow is not so much. This is a pension plan created by all of New York, plus a dozen of the largest Mousy gangs in New Jersey. They started a few years ago to set up such a gangster fund, pooled part of their assets, invested in legitimate businesses, turned it into clean money, and then money made money, every gangster retired, or had children laundered by, if you leave this group, you will get a huge reward from it. And Bucky would know all of this, and he could still find it here. Naturally, he killed a pig before, um, and interrogated that big boss. As for why Bucky asked this, it was because Wilson Fisk and his partner James Wesley were also thinking about the money before, so they would deal with the Mousy gang. After Bucky took care of the two, Hill asked his subordinates to investigate their information, and got Wesley's notebook, which contained an ambiguous plan. But the name of the big boss Mousy and the gang fund were written down in black and white, and when Bucky surrounded the gangsters by himself, he specially spared the big boss's life, and the current scene happened. Everyone loves money, but not everyone only cares about money. Hill doesn't pay much attention to money, but when she first saw so much knife music, she subconsciously said, what should we do now? Bucky is even less interested in W. let's split it between the two of us, 50, 50. Hill. I'll just leave and close the door for you. In fact, both of them were just shocked by the knife music in the room, and quickly recovered, and then called their subordinates with a phone call. Next to the two of them, there were nine more Wang Duo Yu who just saw, six agents and three college rookies, all dazzled by the greenness of the room, as if there were countless Franklins confronting each other. They said, come on, be merry. Fortunately, they are all professionals, and those with unqualified character cannot come to Hill. They all recovered quickly, and then pushed the ready-made trolleys and drove the forklifts to transport the money out one after another. Finally, there is the customary part of pouring gasoline and setting fire. Unfortunately, there is no money and no combustibles, but just like a certain master who likes to throw ashes and then do a full set of rituals, Bucky also pays great attention to the sense of ritual, killing and setting fire, killing people, set fire if you can. Howard, the things are here, S.H.I.E.L.D. can send someone over. Bucky and Hill have discussed that if they get the money, they will use it as a special fund, use the channel of S.H.I.E.L.D., and let Hill set up a charitable foundation, which will be used to open free clinics, shelters, orphanages, etc. charity. It's not that Bucky really treats money like dirt, but that funds from unknown sources, especially cash, are really hard to spend in the beautiful country. People here are used to credit card consumption, and basically few people pay with large amounts of cash. That is, to eat fast food, order a pizza, and buy a snack at a gas station, you will use 10-20 yuan bills. Don't say that you are buying a villa with a local tyrant in the east, and you are carrying a few suitcases of rabbit coins. Even if you go to buy a car and pay the bill directly with a few stacks of Franklin, unless it is an underground car scrapping yard, it will only arouse suspicion, and then report it to the IRS and let their law enforcement team check the account. So so much cash, if Bucky took it himself, he would have to worry more than Wang Duo Yu, how to spend it on this pile of paper that takes up space, but shield. They have a special fund for top secret missions, even the IRSI won't bother. Moreover, Hill is also in charge of the foundation. Anyway, the beautiful country will open a foundation for charity if it has money, and there are many preferential terms for tax reduction. So take a look and enjoy it, and then let's keep out of sight and out of mind. If you have that time, worry about how to deal with the money, how to wash it clean, and how to convince the people around you. He spends a little time on the browser project, and then thinks about some new network projects, turning his company into a network giant, and then making money from stockholders, isn't it good? Bucky and Hill took the money, but the most important thing was not the money itself. It's the dozen or so largest gangs in New York represented by the money. It is conceivable that more than a dozen bosses of the Mousy Gang are singing songs with their little girls in their arms, thinking that one day they will wash their hands in the golden basin and go to buy an island to enjoy the happiness, 
but they are suddenly told that they have worked hard to commit crimes if the money obtained is burned by someone else, what a burst of mentality it will be. As for Bucky and Hill, they wanted to blow them up directly, to make them heartrending, heart-wrenching, and painful. And it's not over yet, Bucky will continue to add fuel to the fire. The night is still long, and Bucky is still busy. Hill took his agents to escort the money. Bucky took out his mobile phone and dialed a number. Wait a minute. Ah. Frank Castor's voice came from the receiver, but there was only one to wait, and then heard a scream that gradually faded away, and finally the sound of a falling object hitting the ground. It seems to be going well. Well, what about you? Frank's rough and hoarse broken gong voice conveyed a trace of relief. Ever since he knew that Bucky murdered and set fire to the processing factory, he had been talking to Bucky in this tone. It's not bad, so now I'm joining too, from now on, continue our game? Losing Treat, the best pizza place in New York. After Frank finished speaking, he hung up the phone, and Bucky also slammed on the brakes, got out of the car and summoned the Falcon's flying wings, and the jet engine began to roar, just like Bucky's increasingly wild heart. Soon, Bucky rushed to an underground car scrapping yard in Brooklyn, broke in through the window without saying a word, and raised his gun to the people who were caught off guard inside. And this is just the beginning. Bucky will not let go of any of the various illegal industries under the command of those big bosses, such as car scrap yards, laundry detergent distribution points, underground casinos, and black market boxing matches. Well, it's really good. Of course, I mean from the point of view of Babyow, eating free food is really the happiest. You talk so much when someone treats you, be careful not to choke. In the early morning, a pizzeria that is not yet open. Bucky and Frank were in the back kitchen, and they did it themselves, heating up a pizza in the refrigerator in the oven. Frank said the best thing, probably every time he worked all night and was hungry in the morning, he would come to this only one, because he was kind to the boss, and the pizza shop was open to him at any time, allowing him to have a steaming bite pizza. For him, it is true that Michelin meals are not exchange. The two of them swept through more than venues that night, perhaps even more efficient than the joint dispatch of all New York police. And this is actually thanks to James Wesley, a very scheming criminal master. When he approached those mousy gangs, he investigated all the various industries they had mastered one by one. It is also due to the high efficiency of Bucky's abuse of food. Every time he goes to a venue, he kills and sets fire to leave a set of procedures, and walks smoothly and smoothly, no one can hinder him. He swept more than, ten, venues, which was about the same time as he was on his way. We will set up a charitable foundation later, little Frank and little Lisa will be on the list of the first batch of help programs, and they will get the best care. Frank has always brought his own dry food, water, arms and legs, and the bullets have not cost Bucky and Hill a penny. Of course, they are all spent on the criminals he killed, but Bucky and Hill I also want to express my heart. Just because they didn't look for Frank, and Frank would do the same, it shouldn't be taken for granted. Ah. Between men, there is no need to say thank you, after clinking the wine glass, everything is in the wine. Frank's work is over here, and Bucky's affairs are far from over. He had just poked the hornet's nest, no, he picked up the hornet's nest and threw it into the fire, and he still had to watch the hornet turn into a headless fly, and he still had to wait to eat the roasted bee pupae. Among the mousy gangs in New York, the most powerful dozen or so lost hundreds of millions of knife music overnight, and were swept away from more than, ten, most profitable venues. Among them, four big bosses were even more unlucky, happened to be met by Bucky and killed directly. The news spread quickly, and not only the gangster circle, but the entire underground world of New York exploded. Shocked by the cruelty and strength of the Queen of the Leisheng nightclub, the gangs of three fighting nations and nearly a hundred gunmen were slaughtered at the entrance of the Leisheng nightclub. Not to mention, this woman has more strength, sweeping more than, ten, venues in a row. This woman is actually a warlord from which African country, does she control an army? All of a sudden, the whole underground world of New York was full of turbulent behavior. All the hooligans who had called or were calling for the idea of the nightclub all scratched their necks and broke out in white sweat. Including those remaining mousy bosses, they went from shock, to rage, to being frightened by the crazy counterattack of the queen of the nightclub in the afterlife. Even if they are fighting nations, they are also the sons of daughters who can't sit still, and they used to be bloody and brave when they were fighting. Has long been exhausted by luxury and money, otherwise he would not have thought of retiring. And the most important thing is that their money was gone, the place was swept away, and the younger brother was sent to the ICU. In the final analysis, it was Dao Le who lost the money. Even if it is a gang, it is all about money after all. If you don't have swords and music, you can't do business without money, you can't afford younger brothers, and you don't have the confidence to be a boss. The broken chain of gang funds is more terrifying than formal enterprises. 
What surrounds them is not a pack of wolves in business wars, but wolves that really eat people. Of course, they are also vicious wolves themselves, are vicious wolves who are driven to a dead end, basically on the verge of a dead end. Rabbits bite people when they are in a hurry, but now they are short of money and manpower, and how many people will follow them to fight the horrible, bloody Mary in the afterlife nightclub? So waiting for their ending is quite clear, Bucky and Hill will continue to hit them, put pressure on them, let them be cornered bit by bit, and then make some unnecessary struggles, finally unwilling turned into a heap of wet garbage. For these follow-up matters, Shield will help deploy more manpower, and Hill will become stronger and stronger, and she will not be short of money. Now she is the real boss, and she will give New York's underground world a good job. Lesson, give them a sample, tell them what will happen if you really offend her. But Bucky returned to the company, continued to do research during the day, learned artificial intelligence core code programming from his nephew, worked on neural connection mechanical prosthetics, and then asked the company to create a homepage called Dubai Navigation. There is no need to make a search engine these days, because there is nothing to search for, and now the company is still promoting it all over the world. I hope that companies from all walks of life will start to assume their own websites. Building a web page navigation is already one step faster for everyone. I said, your aesthetics of machinery is really hard to describe. Isn't your design well understood? Why? Tony watched as Bucky continued to modify Little D in order to change his mind, giving him a strange shape with three legs and two hands, a recurved spine and metal hair, making another breakthrough. The two arms were replaced with octopus legs with five tentacles each, and dense electronic eyes were installed on the recurved spine and the dull hair, which became more and more terrifying. He really had the urge to let Xiao Dai fight with Xiao Di and die together. It's so refreshing, don't tell me it won't cheer you up when you're drowsy. I've never seen such a boring person. Bickering is bickering, the two actually get along pretty well, just ignore the big nephew, pissed guy's mouth. And just when Bucky basically finished his knowledge of the mechanical arm and was about to start designing one himself. He was summoned by Howard to shield, headquarters. Dude, if you ask you to hire a life assistant, you won't hire one. At least let your Maria or Jarvis watch over you. When Bucky looked at Howard, although it was not obvious, he was obviously less energetic than when he was obsessed with research, and there seemed to be more wrinkles on his face. After all, personnel and administrative management, as well as strategic calculations and intrigues, are another kind of exhaustion, and they are far more exhausting than indulging in beloved things. But Bucky also knew that the dedicated Howard, unless he was thrown to his wife, he would ignore what others said, but now Shield cannot do without him. I had no choice but to talk about the business first, and then notify Maria Stark to come here. Going to Detroit? By the way, you said last time that Fury and the others are going to Detroit. What is it? It's a serial murder case. What kind of serial murder case can use an elite agent like Fury? Bucky was very surprised when he heard it. What kind of serial murder case, even Fury couldn't hold it, and let him do it himself? The ultimate killer who opened the Peace Hotel? In the early 60s, the Grand Motor City once flourished and became the largest manufacturing center in the world. However, due to the need for more labor, a large number of blacks with lower wages flowed in, the crime rate gradually increased, and whites began to flee the city and move to the suburbs. Then the conflict between the police and blacks broke out, which led to a large-scale black riot in 67. The city flourished and declined, and it took a sharp turn to become a crime city. In the 90s, Detroit Jungshui had a series of measures, and there was a short-term recovery, but it was a temporary solution, not a permanent solution, which was a drop in the bucket. While the beautiful country was on the road to becoming stronger, the city declared bankruptcy in 2013. When Bucky came to this city, he could not see any signs of economic recovery. When driving on the street at night, he could still hear faint gunshots and sirens everywhere. There were basically no ordinary passers-by on the street, and some crowds, gangs, gangsters with bulging waists. Although it's not Gotham City, it's only short of a big money, a few villains in a mental hospital. Along the way, Bucky stared left and right, and the electromagnetic short circuit tripped three people who robbed women, five people who fought, and seven people who robbed him. Then he came to the designated place, a dilapidated garage. Long time no see, Phil, how are you? The one who connected with Bucky was Colson, who was just in his early thirties and had a deeper hairline. It is a joint because the hairline brothers are very cautious. The situation is not very good, sir. I really don't know what to say about the problem this time. Dot you will know it after you look at it. Howard didn't get the specific situation, or he didn't explain it clearly. Bucky thought he was here to catch a serial killer until now. Well, it's crazy, but it's rabies madness, isn't it? I saw Nick Fury, a black-haired guy with a haggard face again. This guy didn't say anything, but just took Bucky to the back warehouse. Turn on the light, 
the dim light illuminates the figure curled up in the corner. The person whose body and limbs were trapped by thick iron chains suddenly turned his head the moment he turned on the light, he was a very thin young Caucasian boy. But his skin was unhealthy pale, much worse than Howard's research and development with his liver for three days and three nights. Moreover, his eyes were completely congested, blood red like a rabbit, and when he saw the three of Bucky, he suddenly disappeared. It was true that there was a sudden burst of rapidity, and with a swoosh, it dazzled people, and rushed towards the three of Bucky at the speed of a 100 meter world champion. Roar. His eyes that wanted to choose and devour people made a horrible scream from his throat, opened his bloody mouth, stretched out claws with sharp nails, and was imprisoned by iron chains, still struggling frantically. Let Bucky blurt out, I gotta fuck. This is actually the extra actor you found, dressed up like this, just to tease me, right? It's still early for Halloween. Okay, that sure looks like something I do, not you, but is that really what I'm thinking of? Fury sighed, took out a folding dagger from his pocket, and gently pricked his thumb with the tip of the knife, squeezing out a drop of blood. Blood. Roar. When the young man saw the blood, he erupted even more crazily. It was actually creaked by the thick iron chain. If that doesn't explain why this former teammate of mine, good boy, is now a fucking vampire of Mare Falca, then you won't believe it until you experience the same nightmare we experienced before. Damn fuck. Bucky couldn't help smearing honey, and was even more curious, what did you guys go through? It all started when Fury brought Brother Hairline and two other agents to Detroit. When they first received the mission, it was also a bit strange, not to say that they looked down on the superkiller who had caused a serial murder and killed nearly 20 people. It's just that it doesn't match their majors. They are secret agents, spies, they can spy, lurk, disguise, infiltrate, and even carry out assassination but they are not detectives, they just pretend to be policemen, they look like that, they can scare people, but they are not very good at criminal investigation awe. But after watching the development of S.H.I.E.L.D., here, the detectives brought them a surveillance video, and they understood that it was really up to them to do this. It was a video recorded by the security system of a penthouse mansion. The owner of the mansion brought back five or six beauties for a party, but just after playing for a while, a few beauties used washing powder to get excited, and they knew it was silly, and there were a few pale-faced men and women who joined them. When? A black figure suddenly broke through the window. Then he took out a double-barreled shotgun and smashed the villa owner's head in one shot. Following his blurry figure, there was a sudden flash in the video, he passed through several beauties, drew out the sharp long knife behind his back, and sliced across the neck of a pale young man. The screen suddenly went black, and the recording stopped abruptly. When the police received the call, it was already a few hours later. The first few beauties recovered from the excitement and found that the head of the owner of the mansion had turned into an indescribable thing, screaming run away, it's time for those with property to come and take a look. The policemen who came first happened to be a pair of police detective partners developed by S.H.I.E.L.D. They found the video of the security system and found that the matter was not simple. And they also heard that this kind of burglary against rich people was not the only one, but this was the third recent one. So they took the video and contacted the bureau. After the four of fury came. They also thought that the black shadow was indeed something special, but they didn't find any clues about him. But fortunately, they can also investigate the deceased to find out why he was killed. There are also those men and women with pale complexions who look a little strange. The master is dead, where did they go? At the end of the video, that black shadow was going to kill someone with a knife. So they asked the two police detectives to use the resources of the local police to conduct an investigation, but after three days of busy work, they couldn't find any information about the pale men and women. Fortunately, they found out that the owner of the mansion had a good relationship with the victim of the previous murder, a lawyer, and a stockbroker, and they often held such parties. Then they followed the clues and found a nightclub they often go to. In the nightclub, several pale men and women were found. It wasn't the previous ones, but the pale skin, cold temperament, handsome men and women, and similar dress styles immediately caught Fury's attention. But when Fu Rui and the others followed these people and followed them all the way to a machinery processing factory, they realized that the other party had noticed them a long time ago and led them here. Then a group of pale men and women suddenly broke out with speed and strength that did not resemble humans, and launched a surprise attack on them. Nick Fury admitted that he was a big E, and he didn't think that a few pale men and women who seemed strange could find out that he, an elite agent, was following him. And these weird guys also exploded with the inhuman speed of the Black Shadow who broke into the house before, and even kicked them more than 10 meters away by an agent. The other is to grab an agent, leap forward, jump onto the three meter high machine, and then open his bloody mouth, four slender and sharp canine teeth, ruthlessly piercing the agent's neck, and blood splatters in an instant. 
and Fu Rui felt that he was going to be cold when he faced a woman who was jumping at him with all her teeth and claws. But at this moment, there was a loud roar of a car engine, and a black Dodge Challenger broke into the door. Boom. It was the black shadow from last time again, a tall African-American young man, in the same style as Fury in The Punisher, wearing a black suit and sunglasses, with a small half of his body sticking out of the window, holding a gun in his hand. The short-barreled, double-barreled shotgun fired twice at the woman who jumped at Fury without hesitation. Damn it. Faker. Fury screamed instantly. Shotgun. What's more, it's a salt bomb filled with salt grains. The short barrel scatters extremely high. When it shot the woman's face, it also sprayed Fury on the back of the head. Although he couldn't kill anyone, the sour feeling made Fury want to turn around and shoot that bastard with bullets. But he also saw that the woman's face was sprayed with blood and pockmarks, and she was still smoking, and she screamed out in an instant. But the black shadow didn't stop, the speeding car passed by Fury, gave Fury a somersault, said hello to Fock again, and ran away rolling and crawling. And the black shadow knocked a pale young man into the air, and smashed him against the wall all the way. But he himself was hit by a huge impact, but as if nothing happened, he jumped out of the car window like a fish, followed by a flash of bright horses, and wiped the pale young man who was smashed against the wall. See you again. But this time, Fury and the others saw the scene after the owl head. The head that soared into the sky, unexpectedly ignited spontaneously without wind, and instead of burning out flames, it quickly burned to ashes like fireworks. And his neck did not spurt out blood, but his whole body burned like a head. In the blink of an eye, he was turned into ashes. It's him. Murderer. Kill him. And this also aroused the anger of the few remaining pale youths, who frantically rushed towards the black swordsman. But Fu Rui and the others did not wait to see the result. Although the black shadow and the pale young man were hostile, it did not mean that he was in the justice camp. He was a murderer who broke into a house. Moreover, this kind of supernatural event is not something they can grasp. So Fury and the Hairline brothers, taking advantage of the battle between the two sides, the shadow swordsman with the right hand knife and the left hand slightly charged, when they were about to kill and kill, they ran away with two wounded numbers. The four returned to the safe house, that were still in shock. But the agent who got bitten was also a problem to deal with. No matter how absurd this thing is, everyone has seen it with their own eyes. If they hadn't gone crazy together and fell into the same hallucination, they would have to accept the reality. Fuck, there are really fantasy stories like vampires in this world of biological. And one of their companions was bitten by a vampire. Fury made a decisive decision, no matter whether there is a problem or not, just assume that he will definitely have a problem, and control him first. So he tied it firmly with an iron chain, and quickly notified the bureau that things had changed, and they couldn't grasp it, so hurry up and send reinforcements. And then there's this scene Bucky sees, but Bucky couldn't do anything about the situation either. He is very good at killing people, and he is very good at saving people. He will use a system prop healing needle, and he doesn't know how to deal with people who have been bitten by vampires. But this is a colleague of Fury and the Hairline Brothers, comrades who have been born and died together. Bucky, who has a good relationship with the two of them, is hard to say, so let's just go to sleep and let him bask in the sun at dawn. Ugly words cannot be said by him. And he also has more serious issues to care about, and that's the vampires themselves. There are vampires in the Marvel world, and there is still a clear origin, that is Count Dracula, but it is not the stories of vampires that are popular among the people, but it comes from a strange thing called the Dark Book. The Book of Darkness is an ancient demon god, the great Shadow Sithorn, the source of all black magic in the world. He records all his evil magic in a book, and this book also contains powerful black magic power. It was the spell on this book that turned Dracula into a vampire, and this book also created a ghost rider in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., starring the Hairline Brothers. But the vampire here, according to Fury's narration, should be in the Blade Warrior series, and the young black brother swordsman they mentioned should be him. Blade Warrior is because his mother was transformed into a vampire when she was pregnant with him, so he also has half the blood of a vampire. He also has a bloodthirsty desire, but he can restrain it, and has super physical strength, and is not afraid of ultraviolet rays. Hum. Just when Bucky was recalling the story of the Blade Warrior, thinking that this should not be a plot he had seen, but an origin story. He suddenly moved his ears, but he heard a faint roar of a car engine, but it disappeared quickly. I'll go out for a while, you are here, don't move around. Bucky didn't wait for Fury and the others to react, he just jumped lightly and jumped out of the window of the warehouse. With his left hand on the windowsill, the whole person flew upside down, turning around in the air, and his feet were just right. Fall gently on top of the roof. In the darkness, Bucky's prosthetic eye glowed slightly like magma. 
After scanning around, he caught a fast moving figure and highlighted it with a red frame. However, instead of throwing a skill directly in the usual way, he waved at the opponent. The ghostly black figure also noticed Bucky, first slowing down his pace, and then speeding up again. On the five meter high warehouse roof, the black shadow leapt up with just a light leap, landed silently, and stood upright facing Bucky. The dim light diffused below reflected a tall black figure, wearing a black windbreaker, black lining, black leather pants and black leather boots, a black scabbard behind his head, and wearing cool sunglasses. This cool shape made Bucky want to laugh a little bit, which is good, very good, not as scary as Fury's floating eye, because he can't see anything at all in the dark sky. What? Bucky watched with a serious face, but he didn't let the other party feel how serious it was. Instead, he immediately understood that the other party was slandering his appearance, and he became a little annoyed in an instant. You designed this shape yourself? Okay, then ask something else, are you here to kill? Bells and whistles. Although Bucky was fighting with this tall young black guy in black. Moreover, the strength of the opponent was greater than Bucky expected, and the reaction speed was extremely fast. It is stronger than Bucky a non-human who is close to three times the physical limit of human beings. Bucky's physical attribute is 16, and his reaction attribute is 17. The other party can probably look like 19 or 20. Without skills, Bucky's physical strength is actually slightly inferior. But when fighting with the opponent, it wasn't very difficult for Bucky to resist. Because unlike Bucky, who has the original experience of the Winter Soldier, he has mastered the most refined and ruthless killing skills honed in countless battles. Although the opponent's fighting was very good looking, Bucky felt that it had the taste of martial arts in a Hong Kong movie. Bucky felt that the guy in front of him probably didn't follow the various fighting moves he learned in the movie, right? Moreover, he doesn't have a lot of experience in fighting the enemy at all, and he will always be confused by Bucky's various fake moves and the combination of fiction and reality. But he can often rely on his abnormal physical fitness than Bucky to regain his disadvantages almost every time. And he can also learn in battle, constantly adjust, refine his moves, eliminate those useless and complicated routines, the more he fights, the more he has real tricks, and the more he fights, the sharper he is. And his moves became more and more dangerous, putting Bucky at a disadvantage gradually. It's really amazing. Bucky couldn't help admiring secretly in his heart, what a unique body, what an innate talent for fighting, this is a natural fighter. If the fight continues and the opponent continues to learn rapidly in the battle, Bucky will be at a real disadvantage. But the other party didn't have the patience. Die, damn vampire. Hearing the other party's yell, Bucky suddenly broke out to attack with three consecutive moves, and he didn't dare to be careless. Although the knife slashed over, it was only a matter of grabbing with his left hand, but after all, he failed to fill the cup and lost face, so also retreat quickly to open the distance. However, Bucky saw that the other party took out a large flashlight from his arms, and after turning it on, a strong purple light burst out. Then he switched the prosthetic eye to anti glare, and saw the other party rushing towards him with a flashlight in one hand and a long knife in the other. This scene was quite joyful for Bucky, and he couldn't help but laugh out loud, ah! But then put his head in his hands and let out a scream. Then, when the opponent stabbed with a knife, the five fingers of the left hand gently pinched the blade body, the legendary steel unicorn arm, and the huge output of power, it would make the opponent crooked at once, and the opponent would trip over with a light step, making him he fell on all fours. Bucky let go of the long knife, caught the flashlight thrown by the other party, took a step back, and said with a smile, your secret weapon doesn't seem very good. However, the other party was stunned, forgot to be angry, but asked a little confused, are you also a daywalker? I can do it at night, I thought I was the only half vampire. Maybe? After all, I saw a vampire for the first time tonight, a creature from a fantasy novel. The other party seemed to be reacting now, and he said in chicken and duck, then what are you? Apart from vampires, how can there be such a powerful existence like you? Young man, there are not only supernatural existences like vampires in this world. Don't you think about it? If there are vampires, can't there be werewolves? Are you a werewolf? No, I'm just a ruthless person. The other party was silent for a while, but unfortunately, wearing sunglasses, Bucky couldn't let Bucky understand his, fuck, I can't beat you, look in his eyes. In short, let's talk about it. After playing for a long time, don't you want to have a bottle of cold beer? Speaking of which, the two started fighting, but the other party didn't talk too much harshly, ignored Bucky and wanted to leave, and was stopped by Bucky, so he shot at a disagreement. Now that the opponent knows that Bucky is not a vampire, there is no need to fight. But even though Bucky wasn't there, there was a vampire smell here, and that's why he came here, so for Bucky's invitation, he was silent for a moment, then nodded, drew a knife, 
put the knife into its sheath in a fancy way, and followed Bucky jumped off the roof. It's you. Damn fuck, how did you find this place? When Nick Fury saw the tall black man behind Bucky, he frowned, touched the back of his head subconsciously, and grinned again, the bastard couldn't kill him with a single shot. I'm here to find him. The agent pointed blankly at the chained agent, and pressed his right hand on the handle of the knife behind his head. Don't worry, don't worry, let's talk first. Bucky stepped between the two of them, signaling that they should not rush to draw their swords, and also signaled Fury and the others not to rush to draw their guns. Let me introduce myself first. I'm Bucky. These three are Fury, Coulson, and Willie. How about you? Blade. Nice to meet you, Mr. Brad. It's the Blade. Well, Blade, I think you are also very curious. To show my sincerity, I will say more. We come from S.H.I.E.L.D., a secret department with the function of interfering with supernatural phenomena. I am a super soldier, and my physical strength surpasses that of human beings. Limit. All right. This is the first time we have come into contact with the vampire incident, and you should know more about it. Can you tell us about your recent actions, as well as the half-vampire and daywalker you just mentioned? Can. With these three sticks that can't make a fart, Bucky suddenly wanted to lock this guy and his nephew Tony in the same room, and see if he could make trouble for the nephew. I don't know when vampires appeared, I only know that my birth came from an accident. The experience of this young blade warrior is basically consistent with Bucky's understanding. His mother was transformed into a vampire when she was pregnant with him, gave birth to him before she was awakened, and then completely transformed into a vampire and ran away. But he didn't elaborate on his growth experience. According to Bucky's spoiler posture, it should be that as he grew older, his bloodthirsty desire continued to increase, and when he finally couldn't help it, he met the most important thing in his life. Who? His wife was killed by a vampire. Whistler, who studied vampires silently all his life, accepted the young blade, helped him restrain his bloodthirsty desire, and trained him as a vampire hunter. The blade warrior just said that he has been training silently to master his own power, and only recently began to take real actions to hunt vampires. I'm very sorry. No, I just want to hunt vampires, I don't care about the rest. Hearing this, Nick Fury couldn't help asking, if a vampire is killed, it will turn into that kind of ashes, right? What about the few humans you killed? That's the Ha Blood Clan, tempted by the eternal life of vampires, and turned into slaves of vampires to serve them. Hiss. Fury suddenly took a breath, he realized the seriousness of the problem, how many vampires are there in this world, and how many humans are controlled by vampires. Nick Fury's question, the Blade Warrior has no answer. He doesn't care either. He only cares about the things in front of him. Whistler, who is also a veteran, teaches the Blade Fighters, which is also the way of the army, that is, a soldier only needs to care about things within three steps of him. So the Blade Warrior only cares about whether every vampire he finds is sent to hell by him. Apparently, there was one that wasn't there yet. You should put this person in my hands, it will save you from the selection problem. His purpose is very clear, and it could have been easily achieved. His physical fitness is even more perverted than Bucky's explosive skill increase, and he can execute the agent who was bitten by a vampire under the eyes of Fury and the others. But when Bucky came, he could only talk. We can't just give up on our companion, we want to find a way to save him. Fury and the others naturally wouldn't give up. They couldn't kill the blade, so they sent their companions who were sent to death together. Being bitten by a vampire, the transformation is irreversible. There is no cure. Helping him out is the only kindness you can do, and the only salvation he can get. But didn't you just suppress your bloodthirsty desire, or did you have it too? There is no spoiler gesture, and Fury, who has never heard of the blade, can't help asking. My situation is different, I was born that way, I don't have a bloodthirsty problem, and I don't know how to save your companions, trust me, there is no going back. The blade warrior even took off his sunglasses and looked at Fury calmly. Fairy, Coulson, and the other agent were a little depressed for a while but they didn't know that the bloodthirsty and crazy monster who was bound by iron chains was no longer their comrade in arms. No, we can't give up. I believe that there is no simple solution, not that there is no way at all. We have abundant resources, the world's top scientists, and the most talented brains. We will definitely find a way. Fury also stared at the Blade Warrior, and gave his answer decisively. The Blade Warrior was a little embarrassed for a while, he was a little envious of this kind of relationship between comrades in arms, if it were him, he would also insist on it. But he couldn't let any vampire go, he swore that all the vampires he saw would be turned into ashes, even that person. The situation suddenly froze. Then both sides looked at Bucky in unison, the man who made the situation stalemate. Blade, someone should be helping you, right? It's hard for you to do these things alone, no one taught you, you won't become the vampire hunting expert in front of us, am I right? 
Blade was silent, but the momentary surprise on his face had given Fury and the others the answer they wanted. Can you take us to the specialist who trained you? The vampire problem is serious, and we need as much information as possible. Dot yes, but you have to take him with you. After you have talked, give him an understanding. We'll talk about it after we talk about it. How do we take him away, and put a stake in his heart? Stakes are useless against vampires. Although Bucky knew it, he still wanted to educate Fury and the others, then what's the use? How to deal with vampires, tell us now. Stakes, holy water, crosses, bibles are useless. What is useful is sunlight, that is, ultraviolet rays and silverware, to be precise, any product containing silver ions. A small amount of silver will cause vampires to be allergic and asthmatic, and a large amount will directly kill them. There is also garlic, which vampires hate extremely, and the extracted allicin will make vampires feel great pain. As the blade warrior said, he took out a small bag from his arms, and unzipped the chain. Inside were two syringes. Colson suddenly said, Ultraviolet rays, silver ions, allison. I feel that this is actually science. Can vampires be regarded as a mutated creature? Bucky praised Brother Hairline in his heart, remembering that in the Blade Warrior trilogy, at the end, someone developed a virus specifically for vampires, which wiped out a wave of vampires. Although the real ancestor of vampires, Dracula, is a product of black magic, these people here have been separated for countless generations, but they can be dealt with by scientific means. The Blade Warrior shrugged. Under Fury's vigilant eyes, he walked up to the chained agent, grabbed his neck, and stabbed two syringes into his chest. What? The agent suddenly wailed in extreme pain, and was held up in midair by the blade's neck, struggling unceasingly. But soon he couldn't resist the severe pain that spread all over his body, and he rolled his eyes and passed out. Come with me. The blade warrior put down the agent, turned and left first. Bucky went over and tied the agent into a dumpling with iron chains, gagged his mouth, wrapped it with tape, and then lifted it up for him. Then he followed the footsteps of the blade warrior and drove away. On the outskirts of Detroit, a manor with a large area. The owner of the manor is the CEO of a venture capital company. He was in the city a few days ago and died of a burglary. But this did not affect the life of the people in the manor. There are still a group of people here, who should eat, drink and play. In fact, this group of people has no blood relationship with the owner of the manor, nor are they friends. They are the masters, or masters, of the masters of the manor. There is only one real owner here, and he is in the master's study, with his wife in his arms, piercing her neck with four slender and sharp canine teeth. He didn't feast on it, he just tasted it. Instead, it was the woman who was quickly pushed away by him, her face was flushed, and her expression was still unfinished. But she didn't dare to question her supreme master, but I looked at him pitifully and retreated silently. After the woman's figure disappeared, the man showed an impatient expression, as if he had eaten something unclean, and after rinsing his mouth with red wine, his expression turned pale. If it wasn't for this woman to get all of that idiot's money. The man is a typical Italian, with gray hair, but firm, plump and shiny skin, no wrinkles at all, but very pale, wearing a well-fitting tuxedo, and wearing a black diamond ring on the ring finger of his right hand. At this time, a middle-aged man in a butler's costume knocked on the door and entered, Patriarch, everyone is here. The man nodded, walked to the window and looked down, one after another luxury cars parked in front of the gate downstairs, and people with different skin colors came down, but they all had a look of paleness. Seeing this, he followed the butler to the banquet hall, where a dinner was already prepared, and he sat at the head of the long table, waiting for the guests to sit down one by one. Then, let's begin. Blade, what's going on with this horse riding? Don't worry about this, give me a shot of inhibitor. This is an abandoned subway station, which was closed because this section of the line could not be operated, and was used by the Blade Warriors as a secret stronghold. After he brought Bucky, Fury and the others here, as soon as he entered the entrance, there was a man with curly white hair in the ticket hall, wearing a t-shirt and leather vest, leather pants and boots, with an iron chain on his waist, mouth with a straw in his mouth, and an old cannon with a short-barreled double-barreled shotgun in his hand. He scolded him head and face. Dao Feng was also used to Lao Pao's stinking mouth, and ignored him at all, but anxiously asked him for inhibitors. Dao Feng's condition is not very good, his face is slightly sweaty, his footsteps are a little sloppy, and occasionally he shakes his head unnaturally suddenly, as if there is a withdrawal reaction. Seeing this, Lao Pao didn't reprimand him, and hurried in with the blade. He dragged one leg, which was obviously not good for him, you guys stay here. Let them come, they brought a thing. Not only did you bring an outsider, but you brought that thing back. What on earth are you thinking? Fuck, come along. It doesn't matter to Bucky and Fury, this is their home field, and the guests can do whatever they want. 
I went down another flight of stairs, and the lower floor has been transformed into a processing workshop, with things scattered everywhere, including guns and ammunition, various cold weapons, various circuit boards, everything. Lao Pao took Dao Fang to the chemical experiment area, and used an injection to draw a cloudy white liquid from a reagent bottle, which looked exactly the same as the injection used by Dao Fang before, and injected it into Dao Fang's arm. Okay. Sure enough, the blade bit a piece of rag, let out a muffled groan, his muscles tensed, and he couldn't help shaking. It took a long time before he stopped, as if he had run a marathon, his whole body seemed to be fished out of the water. Was it to suppress the bloodthirsty desire with pain? Seeing that blade was weaker than before, panting heavily on the chair, Bucky had a guess in his mind. Tell me, who are you? When old Pao saw Bucky and Fury, they all looked curious. He stepped forward and stood in front of Dao Feng. Don't look at Dao Feng's mouth, but he is actually very protective. Shield. Interfering with supernatural phenomena. You just established it recently? After World War E. Then you don't know anything about vampires. My wife and son were killed by vampires in front of me. When, where are you? The old canon named Abraham Whistler, knowing that Bucky and others are here on behalf of Shield, also said that it is a secret department specializing in supernatural things, said that he lost his temper. Mr. Whistler, we deeply sympathize with your experience, but we really don't know the existence of vampires. I guess your experience is a very isolated case. If there are many such victims, it is impossible for us to pay attention. Arrived. Vampires have always been secretive. After hearing what Fury said, the old cannon Whistler glared and wanted to get angry, but a still weak voice came from behind him. Whistler turned around and stared. Which side of you does that mean? He is not an ordinary person, we can use him. How do you want to use it? Bucky, who was pointed at by the blade finger, said in his heart that this guy is really rude, but. System information. You have triggered the quest, Legend of Vampires, you should get enough information about vampires from Blade Warrior and his partners so that you can trigger the next quest from them. Let's go with the flow first. You trust them? Just met once, guys of unknown origin? Did you secretly smoke my straw? It's not them, it's him, he's better than me. What? Whistler originally thought that his brat was being fooled by the axe agents who didn't have a good heart at first glance. But I didn't expect that he was subdued by others? Who could be stronger than the big killer he trained to hunt vampires? That's not scientific. Knowing how perverted Blade's body is, Whistler looked at Bucky full of doubts. Bucky didn't say much, and directly took off the glove on his left hand, exposing the metal palm, picked up a screwdriver on the table not far away, and bent the screwdriver into 360 degrees with a little force with his thumb. Dot fac, are you a half vampire too? After a little explanation, Whistler finally stopped making trouble. It's not that he doesn't need help, he supports this stand alone, it's actually very hard work, most of the things here except weapons, including the car driven by Daofeng, are all picked up by him, and then he uses his machine repair and electronics ability in engineering, a little repair and refitting. He also knows that although the blade is powerful, it is only a person after all, and this is a road of revenge with no end in sight. But he will not trust anyone easily, especially the positive department. He didn't reject Bucky and the others, just because Daofeng said that he couldn't beat Bucky, so this group of positive axe agents were strong, and they wouldn't turn around and leave, so he could only tolerate it for a while. Well, as you guessed, vampires have always been very low-key, they have livestock breeds. All I encountered was a bastard vampire hunting wild food and having fun, fuck. Whistler didn't want to talk about his sadness, I have been looking for information about vampires, but I am a lame old man, but I don't have the power of revenge, until I met the blade. As the blade warrior said, the old man has been training him, and then secretly searched for information about vampires. After years of unremitting search, he already has some targets that are confirmed to be Kazakhs, and by staring at Kazakhs, he will naturally find the whereabouts of vampires. Moreover, as a half-vampire, Blade Warrior can smell the special breath of vampires, as if sharks are so sensitive to bloody smell. So Daofeng, who had recently learned to be a teacher, carried out those few actions. Whistler talked about some knowledge of vampires he had, and then said about the agent. I also hope to find another way to eliminate vampires, which is what you call a cure, but I am not good at these. I only know that if you inject silver nitrate solution and allicin solution immediately after being bitten, it is possible to resist the transformation process. That was the only time I tried, but the person died of heavy metal poisoning, and neither did I. Find other opportunities. Whistler shook his head helplessly, but Fury in the other's eyes lit up, doesn't this mean that there is still a way? As long as there is enough time and you keep trying, there must be a way. Whatever you want, you are the positive axe department, so you will naturally do those secret experiments. I will wait for your experiments to go wrong. 
before the real vampires start making trouble, you will create a vampire frenzy. Whistler really didn't have a good impression of the positive acts department, and his mind was full of distrust and conspiracy theories. He originally had the idea of trying, but as soon as Fury said it, he immediately turned into a bully. But don't expect me to cooperate. I just want to eliminate vampires, and I don't want to waste time and energy on other things. Knight. A black Dodge Challenger and a silver-gray Ford Mustang galloped on the road one after the other. Bucky and Blade are heading to an underground nightclub. If a nightclub had to carry the prefix underground, it would definitely not be as serious as the Leisheng nightclub. This is an illegal nightclub with all kinds of prohibited items, all kinds of stimulating behaviors, and all kinds of things. It was also one of the strongholds of several vampires found by the old man Whistler. This was the next goal of Blade Warrior, but now there is Bucky. Although Whistler has a bad mouth and said that he welcomes and unconditionally supports the killing of vampires, he will not accompany others. But in fact, he is not a super genius. He just has the advantage of time. He discovered it early and has a lot of useful information. As long as he keeps in touch, he will not be ashamed to ask. As an agent, if you don't have the consciousness to do everything for the mission, can you be considered a serious agent? And there just happened to be a guy with a good-natured temperament here, a guy who was smiling so hard that people couldn't get angry. So Fury and another agent brought the agent who was transformed into a vampire back to the secret laboratory of S.H.I.E.L.D., and Agent Coulson served as a liaison. And Bucky, another link between the two parties, teamed up with Blade to kill vampires. He put on the combat uniform of the Winter Soldier again, and this time he was fully armed, with a pistol, a tactical knife, and a magazine belt on his waist, and an MP5 microcharger next to him, and the trunk was enough ammunition to start a local conflict. Bucky is not sure about the effect of system weapons and his own quick cracking skills on monsters like vampires that can only be killed by targeting their weaknesses. Naturally, according to the rules, all weapons and ammunition provided by Whistler are used. It is silver-plated. Without talking all the way, the two race to the place, beside a dry river. It's in that underground sewer inspection port over there. In the dark night, Blade has dark vision, and Bucky has the low-light mode of the prosthetic eye, so they can clearly see the situation in the distance. The inspection entrance was pitch black, and there was an iron gate inside. Not long after, a muscle car with violent music came over in the distance. Five gothic rock guys got out of the car, went directly to the inspection entrance, and followed the iron door to open, showing a faint light. Whistler has inquired that this place is controlled by a gang. There are many gunmen watching the scene, and it is backed by the underground drainage system. If you run away, you won't be able to catch it. The blade warrior was a little bit awkward, he was easy to kill, and he was not afraid of any gunman. His abnormal physical fitness far surpassed the rapid self-healing ability of humans, which was no difficulty for him. But he doesn't want to kill people, he doesn't want a half-human, half-monster guy like him to kill a human being, unless that human being is a scum like the Kazakh clan who is willing to degenerate and give up the qualification to be born as a human being. Ordinary scum in society, but he is a bit reluctant to deal with it. He is a vampire hunter, not a thug who kills indiscriminately. So he looked at Bucky, the super soldier reformed by the secret department of the Axe, the guy with the legal license to kill. He doesn't want to kill ordinary scum, it's just out of his insistence as a half vampire, but he doesn't mind other people clearing those scum. If I knew that Frank was called, he must like this kind of multiplayer shooting sport that is beneficial to the body and mind. Well, Bucky actually likes it quite a bit, he can gain experience, but he also has his own persistence. Such eyes that seem to want to be bleached in vain are slightly sensitive. But this time the target was a vampire, and Bucky still tried to grasp the situation inside first. And just above the iron gate, there is a camera. Bucky's line of sight, as the prosthetic eye shimmered, switched to the perspective of the camera, and then the screen switched, turning into a super eye-catching scene. The old driver who was once bombarded by internet information and dared to say, I have never seen such a scene, now wants to say, I have never seen this. In the dim space, the light from the ball lights reflected the chaos that can be seen everywhere, and it was unsightly everywhere. This was a carnival of extreme chaos. Bucky examined it carefully and critically, and felt that compared with the parties held in Westworld, they could only be regarded as play games. Cough, these depraved guys are not the point. But apart from this wild party, there is only the front door, and the entrance to the spacious underground drain, and there are only three cameras in total. I remember the wiring diagram of the drainage system here. I went around to the back to find the entrance, wait for my signal, and make a little noise at the front door. After listening to what Bucky said about the situation inside, the Blade Warrior said so after a moment of silence. Actually, I'm good at starting from the back door too. Dot but the Blade Fighter said first, so let him insert from the back door, and Bucky is not very picky. 
After the figure of Dao Feng quickly disappeared into the night, Bucky went back to open the trunk of the car, took out some things, and then disappeared into the darkness. Front door. Behind the iron gate, there was a young man sitting at the door. Although the irritable music below could be heard clearly, he was so bored that he stared blankly at the small monitor screen, and couldn't help feeling sleepy. But suddenly, he found that the black and white display screen was suddenly turned off, and then the electronic lock on the door suddenly opened automatically with a beep. He suddenly wanted to stand up, but his butt felt numb after sitting for a long time, and then he saw a hand with a leather glove protruding from the crack of the door, and then waved to him. Wang Defa. Pia. He subconsciously looked up, and the hand reached out and slapped him a little. The guy was instantly annoyed, and said, fuck off fuck, again, and went to draw his gun. But soon he stopped, because the hand, the culprit who angered him, grabbed his head and hit the wall lightly, making him pass out. After Bucky knocked out the doorkeeper boy, he smashed the electronic lock with another punch, then looked around quickly, found the entrance, and sneaked in quietly. There were two more guards at the entrance below, and Bucky made an electromagnetic short circuit, causing the two of them to foam with sparks and lightning. He followed but didn't go in directly, but took off the straps that were full of grenades on his shoulders, pulled the pull ring tied together with a string, and threw it in. The men and women who were still reveling inside did not notice that a black object fell from the sky and hit a person on the back, causing him to scream, oh, in fright. Then billowing smoke erupted from under his feet. Cough cough cough. The choking, spicy and coquettish smell instantly filled the entire space, making everyone inside burst into tears and cough violently. A group of people thought it was on fire, except for the one who was so frightened that he flew away, they all ran out regardless. No one noticed that a black figure with goggles and a mask slipped in against the wall. 